Hello! Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Matt, a.k.a. Leeds and Max, and welcome to what is sure to be a very royal episode of The Gap. I am your host. With me, I have my co-host by the equally as royal Shane. How are you doing today, Shane? You're a fraud, Spider-Man! God fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. You're a fraud, Spider-Man! You're a fraud, You're a fraud Spider-Man! Spider-Man. Run! And flips a glass table and it shatters everywhere. With, like, the uh, sh- with Andrew Garfield's shitty fucking suit. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10, best movie of the fucking yeah. year. If you haven't so seen Amazing Spider-Man wanted... 2, <laughs> don't actually watch it. It's not worth it. Uh, but... Uh, but uh, with with uh, with us, we ha- we have our other co-host Spencer. How are you doing today, Spencer? By the greatness bestowed upon me by Euphemia v. Britannia, we shall take control of Area Eleven. The Japanese will no longer be a thorn in the side of the great empire. Wow! Look at this fucking nerd. I'm pretty good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I command you all now. Die, and then they all die. Mm-hmm. Fuck. All right, so uh, I'm pretty sure everyone can guess what we're covering just by a. Uh, I mean, they can they can, yeah, they, they, they can use their eyes, speak, Matt. They, they, they can use their eye, but Wait, what if they don't have eyes? What if they're blind, Shane? Okay, then the, it begs the question: How'd they get to YouTube to f- begin with? What if their friend put it on for them? Well, what if, that's very nice if, of them. Are you saying that blind people don't have friends? <laughs> wow, Shane. <laughs> wow, oh, I've blind, been exposed. <laughs> ableist. Ableist. I'm a You're low a fraud, T beta Spider-Man. cuck. You're a fraud, Shane. You're, You're a fraud, fraud Spider Man. <laughs> Can that please be the stuff. title of the episode? You're, You're a fraud, fraud Spider Man. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, two minutes into the episode, tentative title is You're a Fraud Spider Man. <laughs> You're a fraud, okay. Spider Man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, this episode's gonna be oh the worst. Uh, I'm not okay. Alright. We had a lot of fun stuff to cover today oh, on the definitely. podcast, folks. This is gonna be a wonderful ride, as you can already tell. Uh we have some cyber we have cybercast to talk about. We got news to talk about. We have our featured anime to talk about. Let's just jump right into it because this is a train wreck already. We oh, wanna yeah. get th- yeah, this is a train Here's wreck already. Here's the thing. I feel like the gap is best known as a train wreck by now, so we're just going with the, the flow here. The gap has been a train wreck since episode one. Yeah, pretty so, much. So let's start with some simulcast though. I think because that's uh that's uh fair enough to start off on. So it's been a couple it's been a, quite a while since we recorded an episode. So we're pretty so we have a little bit to talk about, I would imagine. Um any which shows do you want to start off with? That's my question. Um, let's start off with the big one. Hey, so what episode of, of The Gap is this right now? It's episode 30. Uh, episode episode 30. 30. It has been yeah. 30 episodes. I've had to take two L's. Shane's had to take two L's. I think it's time for you, Matthew. The time uh, has come. The time has come for the host. To finally take an L on this podcast. So, Shield Hero. I knew yes. it. I I'm knew so- it. I fucking knew I'm it. Sorry. I'm, I'm very d- sorry. I knew damn well you like Shield Hero now, Matt. I d- oh, let me explain because I need to explain myself first. I'm going to defend myself here. Oh, okay. While also taking an L. That first arc still fucking sucks. <laughs> Which, That's, yes, it does. That first arc still sucks. I am... I'm still gonna stand by what I said back when, it, when Sealed Hero first started up. However, and here's where the L comes in, I like where it's going now. I, I, I'm kind of happy I stuck with it. I'm happy that it didn't... I'm, I'm happy that it not only got better, it got infinitely more interesting. And because now, instead of it being like pretty much like every isekai now, it's basically Spice and Wolf with a chicken. And I think that's kind of an amazing, I think that's kind of awesome. And it yeah. doesn't take, and it's more of a comedy now. It has a lighter tone. It's more, 
it definitely it, fe- it has a more its own identity now and i i hope it goes in that direction i still have some issues i still don't give a shit about the main like fret like the waves or whatnot i who cares? I don't. Yeah. I don't really give a shit. Uh, the villain is still woefully weak, very weak villain, and and the other heroes are mostly one dimensional at this point, with the exception of Spear, who's actually getting development. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but even then, he's not interesting enough to really carry it. So, like in the end, it's all down to our protagonists, which they're really good. They're really, really good, and they. They bounce off each other really well. There's a lot. There's this just you know, just it, when they're going from place to place. The series is just far, far more interesting. And the fact that they've been they've been doing that ever since that first arc wrapped up, and it's been infinitely, infinitely superior. So if they stick with that, I'm good. Shane, you should actually stick with. You should go back to Shield Hero, or at least skip the first arc like, and just fucking start there. Like, here's the thing. At this point. I really mm-hmm. don't care enough to do that. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure tell, it did turn around. Like, I don't no, I tell you guys at all. Up, but there's only seven episodes. You could skip skip straight to episode four. Yeah, you could just skip straight to episode four. The only thing you'll miss is some context for the best character of the show, Raftalia, uh, uh, who's easily which, my favorite of the show. Easily, Raftalia is still the best, and I can say that in the newest episode, um, mm-hmm. episode seven, yeah, seven. Um, they go to a hot spring. It's, it's a hot spring episode. However, it also is it, – it's okay. The comedy is still there, but at the very end of the episode, you get a bit more of like the whole like – okay, get, Matt, you know the yeah. one scene in episode four at the very end? Yeah. It, you get more info on that scene where it's like – Oh, okay. Well – where it's like, hey, what, how, what kind of shield is that? Why is it called the Curse Shield? Like, that stuff. Uh, I, 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 yeah, it, it, it still keeps that kind of, like, happy-go-lucky um, tone, but the ending is kind of shocking, and it, but it still kind of is really good. Uh, but no, I just wanted to get that out of the way and say, hey, Matt, take that out. I- I took that L. I took mm-hmm. that L. Now that I took that L, uh, shit. Is there any other shows that people want to talk about? Because I have a, there's a couple. There's I a, don't want to. There's only one want, show. I don't want to talk about Promise Neverland because fuck Promise Neverland. Yeah, fuck Promise Neverland. You guys one haven't seen the newest the episode yet. So. I haven't yet. Yeah, I, I haven't because I worked and I basically fucking like died. Hey, after, hey, after guess that. what? Episode eight is the best episode. That's but all I have to it, say. But isn't every episode of Promise Neverland the best, the best episode? episode. At this point? Episode eight is the best it's been so far. Just because, episode. without going into spoilers, everything is falling apart. <laughs> everything. Oh. Fucking um, Promise Neverland. Yeah, no, Promise Neverland's really good, guys. Like, it is. It's really, really good. And, but, I think those show. Go ahead. In terms, I f- I figure I think we were going to talk about the same thing. In, fi- in terms of actual simulcast discussion, the only show I want to talk about is Mob, because uh, yeah, Mob is pretty. Because mm. the last time we covered Mob, it, episode five had just happened, and we were like, "How the hell are they going to top episode five? <laughs> <sighs> um, so. I no. Before we get into this, I want to like say that this episode made me rethink a lot of things, and I am now about to d- to give a volcanic take. I think Mob Psycho is better than One Punch. You you know what, Matt? I think I, I, you I, and I, I, I think of that now. You and I yeah. have always been on the same wavelength because ever since that episode, I've been thinking the same thing. Because, oh, really? like, yeah. okay, let's be, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. One Punch Man is fucking incredible. It's in my top five favorite anime of all time. I fucking love it. I have been contemplating replacing it with Mob because, it's, it's oh, that good. my it's God. It's that good. This, this, no, this, this season has been that good. Like, this, this season, season... This season's only halfway through, just over halfway through. Like, 
There's like five this, more episodes left. Is this quite possibly the one of the the, the best like Shonen season I've ever seen? This Might is, be. E this is easily one of the best follow up seasons. Like e hands down. Like you thought that the season jump, the like in terms of follow up season, this might be one of the best follow up seasons I've seen like ever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. All, in terms of sheer animation quality, this is the best looking show Bones has ever fucking made. Oh yeah, um, yeah, ooh, 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 yeah. Um, I I love it. I fucking love this show, mm -hmm. and I'm fucking mad. At it now oh, because oh, of what I'm happened so last week. Mad. Like, okay, no spoilers, obviously, but if what happened in this episode is true, which I have my doubts, but there's a very good chance that it could be true, this changes everything. <clears throat> like, literally everything is different now. Because now, because now it's like, oh, oh no. <laughs> It's like I, I, I'm 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 not going to spoilers for Spencer's sake. Um, Thank you. But this is a this is a bombshell type reveal. Like as soon as you realize what's happening, the entire everything about the show changes like in an instant. It's like they flip the switch. It's and it's this fucking show, ridiculous. This this fucking show is so good, and and to think that fucking like. Like, even when the show, like, one of my favorite things about this season is that even when it's not focusing on the action, the animation is so good. Like, it's just so fucking good. Yeah, they put they put so much fluid movement and detail into the tiniest little instances of character acting, and it just really no, makes everything come to life. No, no, what fucking, like, what, the, the one that got me was in episode seven or Ray, like, the very beginning when Reagan's, like, drinking from the bottle and you, like, see him, like, twisting the bottle. Yeah, he bottle, twists like, the cap and then he puts it on the table and then he takes the sip. Yeah. Like, they and, put... And, and you see, like, every single detail. Like, you see him, like, opening and screwing and it's going up and down. And you're like, you don't normally see that in anime. Like... Like, um... Whatever, whatever team inside Bones that's working on this show isn't getting paid enough. <laughs> they deserve they, more money for this. They, they, they're doing like, oh my god, I love this show. I love it so, so much, and I can't. Oh my god, I can't, I can't deal with it. I can't. No, <laughs> I don't know. Like I just for the for the since the season started, I've been like 50 50 between whether mob or promised Neverland is the best show so far this year nah it's mob it's easily mob. it's mob it's mob will it get beaten this year I actually don't know I don't know like I don't, actually don't know don't be don't be surprised though if at the end of the year I'm calling mob psycho my anime of the year because it's Same. Very, looking very likely same uh it this it's it's so good. It's so fucking good. There's no like the thing I love the most about the newest episode with that big reveal is that it makes you recontextualize the entire season up till this point. Because for the most part, it's been a lot more laid back. It's been a lot more focused on small character development and one-off side stories. There hasn't been a huge overarching narrative up to this point, and then all of a sudden everything changes and it's like Oh, they were just misdirecting us hard. <laughs> like, they caught yeah, us off guard with this shit. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of the first season, actually. Like, what the first half is very, uh, very, like, one-off stories, and the second half is, like, just all the stuff with Claw. Yeah. That's probably what they're doing this season. Because that's, it, it has the same stuff. Like, the first half was, like, Ironically, both seasons that happened in episode eight, too. <laughs> Yeah, they do. Uh, and episode eight was that episode with the battle with uh, that. Uh, what's the fuck is that guy's name? The Muscle Man. Yeah, I know who well, you're talking yeah. about. I just can't remember his yeah. name off the top of my head. It's Koyami, I think. Yeah, I think like it's that. Koyami too. Yeah, I think it's Koyami. But that fight with one, huh, uh, second, um, second. That's pretty much where it happens here. Here, you know, one of the things I love about this season of Mob in particular, though. Is the fact that it feels like that fucking? It just feels more. It's it's like it, the, it feels so much more confident than the first season is. Mm -hmm. Like it kind no, of like, like how Mob does. Yeah, kind of like how Mob. But also, I feel it like it, it feels more confident because it feels like that like 
like it reminds me of like every like a good like a good movie sequel like, like the first movie is good but like it's obvious that like the, the, the they're trying to find their bases but then everyone really likes the first one so with the second one they get they have like free reign to kind of just do whatever yeah because like with, and, with they already proved themselves with season one so they have nothing to fucking prove to anyone at this point well, they can just the go thing, all like, out with it Season yeah. one is more of a proof of concept. Season two, you can do what you want. Yeah. Oh, they're doing. They're, they're literally doing whatever they want, dude, and it's great. Uh, but anyways, Bob. Yeah, Bob's the best show of the season. If you're not watching Mob, <laughs> what are you doing? If you, it, if you haven't seen Mob, uh, first off, go watch season one. It's only twelve episodes. It's a really easy watch. And then just go right into season two. You fucking daft cunts. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, that was a little. That was a little aggressive. But. That that that, 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 was a, that was a little violent, Shane. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, um, I. Uh, but outside of that, I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about in terms of simulcast because nothing else has pretty much changed. Nah, with the all, exception, that's all I wanted. To talk with about. the exception of Dororo, where which turns out that the whack stuff from last podcast is not as whack. No, uh, so. they just they just yeah. completely dropped it. Really. Well, I it, mean, it's it, there. It, it's there, but it gives it wasn't, context now. Yeah. It wasn't dropped. It was just no context was given at the end of the episode. We get context after. We now have context, and it's like, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it oh, makes sense. Know. And then tragedy. So Dororo like, uh, makes me I gotta, cry. I gotta, I gotta, I don't, Dororo's, Dororo. Dororo is like the most depressing show of the season, like without a fucking doubt. Um, actually, the most, uh, actually, we all know that the most depressing show of the season is actually Wiz. Because, uh, God, I'm so fucking bored. <laughs> I'm bored to tears. You don't understand. I fucking talked to Shane yesterday, and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, Wiz is really depressing to me because, <laughs> one, the backgrounds in Wiz are fucking gorgeous. Because they're real life images. Yeah, the fucking semi realistic, like, style, gorgeous. The characters don't look like they belong in their own anime, and it's they're boring character designs. But I like like there's specific things I like about the character designs, and it's like the hair. The hair is really vibrant. The hair is really vibrant, and like I I really like it, like the look of of just the fucking it's just a weird aesthetic thing. It tickles my my good bone, and I'm like oh yeah. Um, yeah, whoever was the color designer on the show has been doing a lot of the LSD. But, has been doing a lot of the LSD and a lot of the heavy lifting, I'd art. Yes, uh, but holy shit, is this fucking boring? Every oh, yeah, time it's it fucking skips boring to the, shit. Okay, I am, I am so I, fucking sad. It's boring. Um, I haven't seen handshakers. Neither have and I. This, That's the only one who has. Yeah, yeah, and this very much. Also, one I thought Headshakers was from like 2006, and then Jane's like, no, it no, was it's like, like two, it's it's two years ago. It's like 2016, yeah. dude. Yeah. Um. So, but every time they skip to the coffee shop, I'm just like, I can just mute it. I, I don't told give a- no. I told Matt like every time they cut to the coffee shop, I audibly sigh because I know what's fucking coming. It's boring it's all, like, exposition incomprehens- that doesn't make any sense. Incomprehensible garbage. Um, and it's one of those... Alright, I'm sad it's so, dep- it's so fucking boring. Because Handshakers is... Any- Handshakers is awful, but it's anything but boring. It's like, it's... Handshakers is like the wor- is like the best kind of bad. It's like the taboo tattoo bad where the act- where the action scenes are so incomprehensible and you can't understand anything. But here's the thing. This isn't really an action show either, because there's they, been like little to no action. I feel like they listened to the complaints from season one and were like, "Oh, uh, fucking everyone hated the action scenes because they were incomprehensible and the animation was dog crap and there was too much CG and the, everything clashed." We'll just not have any action this season then, and just make it more character driven. Which okay, mm. ambitious, ambitious, but all, okay, let's see ambitious, what you guys got. But make the characters interesting. Yeah, that implies Ooh. that you have faith in your character writing, which uh, it's not. I there. don't give a. Sh- shit about these people Someone also the, said, also the internal consistency is off the guy did uh, fuck it uh fuck it um someone described it uh and i think this is the perfect way to describe Wiz. it is a basically a two episode it's basically a th- like an ov like a two episode ova spinoff 
dragged out for 13 episodes. Yeah. It Which has is, it. It has no plot and it no has, direction. It has no all. conflict because anytime anyone shows up to oppose Yukia, he beats them in like five minutes, and then they become and, best friends. Like and every I'm single just one straight of them. Up honest, okay, because I'm like an episode or two behind. For those of you that are caught up on Wiz, can you explain to me the plot? I don't know. It's it's I, about I, the the best I can cipher is that fucking there's this fucking uh, guy called the composer who's a handshaker himself who wants Yukia's power in order to fucking control Ziggurat because that's pretty much every villain's who, plan. In this, who in who this guess what? Role. He's only been there for like five minutes, and every time he shows up, he just does the boring Dude, villain monologue. Okay. What's interesting? The, 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 I didn't even know that the fucking that that green that that green haired guy, especially you know that guy with the butler. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. That's He's the composer. the composer. Yeah, that's what? the composer. That's the composer, yeah. dude. It's so fucking obvious in hindsight. It's so obvious in hindsight, but the problem is that the show is so, and the show treats it as kind of obvious too. Unfortunately, it's like, oh yeah, this is the composer. You're like, no, that's but, like. Unfortunately, the show is so fucking convoluted and incomprehensible that you have no idea that he's the composer until they just blatantly say it. I was gonna say, not once have you stayed. Did you stay? Well, as far as I am, but he's the composer. Also, you call him he by just his actual name. Also, he just hasn't been there. So he hasn't why done would anything. they haven't established him at all? So like, he hasn't done shit. In fact, if you are like me and you watch the entire episode and you watch until the next episode preview, they've made fun of the fact. They make jokes so in the next episode preview, like, "Hey, we didn't have any lines in this episode. What are the writers doing with us, huh?" Like, they the writers do for the, and I'm like, "I don't know. Ask the writers who Ask wrote the this. Writers. The writers are self-aware. Help." <laughs> it's it's really really sad when an episode from a magical girl parody. Explains the anime industry better than the anime industry. I yes. I, I just I you know no, and it was okay. So like, here's the thing: Wiz is almost done, at least. Yes. So it's, we're and we're in far too deep to stop now. So like, oh, no, there's like five one, episodes left. One, I can't stop at this point. Even if you two stopped, I can't because I really like the OP. Eh. The OP is eh. starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> I fucking really like it. Okay, I like it. And I will die on that hill. I'm not gonna die on the Wiz Hill because that's a that that's a pretty that's fucking weird, that's, that's a that's weird a, that's hill a to die on. It's not a that's, hill. It's like a jagged rock on the edge of a cliff. <laughs> but I will die on the hill of defending the OP because it grew on me. <laughs> eh. But we're gonna do. Keep in mind, but there are also infinitely better OPs this season. It is a better OP than Handshakers. I'll give it that. Um, okay. Handshakers' OP is pretty good. G- uh, this sh- and this show is also better than Handshakers, uh, just from a production perspective, but uh, not by much. Um, so I think we're pretty much done with simulcast because I don't think there's anything yeah, else we want to talk about. I don't get anything else for uh, it. Uh, aside from you know, once again, watch Kaguya-sama. Yeah, I think I might be. I just. Wait, I think I might wait till the season's. I might do, pull a Euro camp, and I might just wait till the season's done, and then just binge it. Uh, uh, cause at this point it's like, it's like eight episodes into it. I'm. Yeah. Might as well wait until it's done, cause I want to watch it. I, I think Shane's probably going to do the same. Yeah, I'm. I've, I've been thinking about it. I probably. I'll probably do that. Okay, yeah. but yeah, just uh, once again, you know, fucking watch it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But yeah. No. We'll watch. It. Uh, I think we're pretty much uh, so. Time to move mm-hmm. on the news. I think. Yeah. Let's move on to our mountain of news. We have nine pieces of news today. Um, we have a lot of news. Um, because we've been gone for like three. Because again, it's been three weeks since we recorded, so a lot of stuff dropped. We're gonna start off with a piece of news that I just that I that came out of fucking nowhere to me. I didn't know about this until like yesterday, but I'm like, this was announced like a couple weeks ago. Um, is anyone here a fan of the video game series Nino? Yes. Nino Cooney, yes. I haven't played it, but it looks cool. Yes, Nino Cooney is excellent. Well, there's a well, there's an anime film coming. Uh, is it done by Ghibli? 
Uh, no, it's not done by Ghibli. Wow. It is done by it is done by Studio OLM. Um, OLM is doing it because Ghibli remember because Ghibli is not working on anything right now outside of me. So, um, so it's it's being done by Studio OLM. Uh, the film is coming out this year. Um, uh, and the movie will start. Uh, the, the the movie will be following a character named Yu. Yu is a prodigy at the top of his class and uses a wheelchair to get around. He has kept his feelings for his childhood friend. I mean, his best Haru is the one dating her. So, uh oh. Um, Whoa! <laughs> the film will feature an original story with which a certain incident, the three friends are able to travel back between and forth. The, ba- the between a certain incident, these three friends are able to travel back and forth between reality and the world of Nino Kuni, so they can go back and forth between uh, the two worlds. Uh, when the, and when the life of Coltana in both worlds is simultaneously put in danger, they must make the ultimate choice. Reportedly, this appara- so it will not be following the plots of either game, but it will be set in the same universe as both games. Okay, good, good move, good move, good, good move. Um, the character design, uh, the character designer from the games, whose name is Yoshiyuki Momose, Momose, who also worked as the character designer on the Legend of the Galactic Heroes and Pom Poco. Uh, aka a lot of stuff with Ghibli will be returning to, uh will be directing uh, will be directing the film and the longtime collaborator Joe uh here my Hayao Miyazaki's uh compo- uh collaborator Joe Hayashi who did the music for all of his films is doing the score for this um wow. um the CEO of uh, Level 5 is overseeing the film and also the main writer and he's also being credited with the original story because he came up with it um, and it will be and and Warner Brothers has already picked it up, and they're expecting and Warner Brothers has picked it up for a uh, for worldwide release. Mm-hmm. So this is not going to be a major company, but by Warner Brothers. So Warner Brothers is going to be in charge of this. Uh, uh, I Shade would fucking love that shit. Uh, uh, although I don't know. Uh, which one you have? Do you have one or do you have two? I don't have either. I just said I'd never played either of them. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I played the first one. Uh, I've played the first one and I played like half of the second. Uh, and they're both excellent. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm very, very happy that this is getting it. I've always, you know, Cootie's always been dreaming out for a movie anyways. So I think, it's like, or like a show. So like, I'm happy it's getting more. And it's an original story. Right, so Shane does not need to have seen the show, uh, played the games to get it. No. Uh, all you need to know, Shane, is that it's an e, e- child. <laughs> yes. Pretty. Um. But yeah, yeah. Nino Kuni get the movie. Get excited for um. Speak. Um. Uh. Uh. Speaking of stuff that I that uh, speaking of stuff that you get decided for we're just going to confirm something from the last podcast that was uh, like officially confirmed like I think a couple days yes. after the we had the podcast after we recorded because we weren't sure whether or not this news was true when we first reported it but after a couple of uh, announcements we revealed it's true Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is getting the second season like, yeah it was, ofi- it was officially confirmed 100% confirmed it's happening so so just get excited for that the uh, Kyoto animation might not be coming back. That's we don't what I yet. wanted to talk about because you told me that that there's a good chance that they might not. And oof, that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it, it big uh, big oof because they would not because of reportedly from what the from what the report in the manga stated that this is going to be treated similarly to the uh high situation this is not a new se- they're considering a new series entirely and not just a new season okay, um, it just, okay if the Kyo if the Kyo anything is true and they're not coming back it this entirely depends on who they get to replace them because how do you beat Kill Annie? You can't. That's the co- that's the answer. I'd say give it. I say Bones is a good replacement, maybe. But they're working on so much stuff as it is. Like, mm. yeah, they're probably gonna give it to someone like JC Staff if that's the case. Which they're also overworked and underpaid. So, but, yeah. but at the same time, they did. They, but unlike Bones, they don't seem to care. So, imagine, uh, imagine just off the fucking wall. Just we see the word Shaft. If it's studios, so what is Studio Shaft doing other than laying off all his employees? 
Uh, the answer is nothing, as far as I know. <laughs> the uh, answer is, is that the, well, the, oh no, they're doing that, but they're doing uh, the new Madoka Magica show. They are, yeah, um, yeah that's they're a doing gotcha that. game spinoff. But you know, it's more Madoka Magica, so who gives a fuck? I'm gonna watch it. You're gonna watch it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna watch every episode. Why? Because it's Madoka fucking Magica. I've been waiting for more. Well, yeah, it's, it's looking more and more so likely that that movie isn't happening. <laughs> That movie's still, in the, according to Shaft's website, it's still in development. So, like, yeah, sure, they said that five years ago. It's still in development. Look, eight, how long has Ava Four Point been in development? Like eight years, and it's still happening. So, fuck you. Um, hey, how but, about um, this? How about you? Fuck you. Uh, fuck you. How about this? Uh, there you go, you little bitch. <laughs> I hate you so fucking much. He added me for no reason. Um, oh, fuck. Okay, so, but, uh... So, uh, yeah, fucking, uh, it, as long as they have a competent studio behind it, I'm sure Dragon Maid Season 2 will be great. However, still, like, they could fuck <laughs> this up real easily. <laughs> yeah, that... N- n- we'll get news on whether or not Kyora is actually for two. We'll see, we'll see, we'll need to see if they're actually coming back who knows maybe they are coming back it was just a misreport yeah maybe uh, we're just being dumb. because it is just a rumor right now that has very little credibility behind it because the guy who spread it has like no source cool. so it's so uh so who knows but we'll see um speaking of uh stuff that uh is, that's kind of cool um we all know this newfangled technology called 4k what um, how many k's 4Ks. What? Um, what? That's like that's like four four strikeouts. That that is that yes, that's four strikeouts. Uh, well, you'd be so you shocked to know that anime is not made in 4K. 4K is a very different technology that is hard to make things for because of how uh adva- because of how uh, advanced and new it is. But it appears that they're trying to get into the game as production IG will now be making a hand drawn anime in. 4K HDR for Netflix uh, this fall. Uh, they will be collaborating on uh, an experimental project to produce the first hand-drawn anime with 4K HDR quality. It will be. It is a Netflix original and will be slated to debut this fall through Netflix's premium plan, which means that if you do not have a 4K TV or have a 4K plan with them, you cannot watch this show. Yes, this show is bother. unavailable to you. Um, so, no... Uh, the the Netflix creative technology engineer Haruka Mi, uh, Miyagawa is supervising, and production IG's Teru Saito, uh, who did the uh, who did a lot of the visual effects work on Blood Plus and a lot of other production IG shows, will be direct, making his directorial debut with this show. Um, uh, uh, there are, he said he said the following: There are hurdles in like equipment. There are hurdles like equipment and 4K and HDR are under underdeveloped fields in the industry. As expressive people, we always search for a chance to produce videos that are more beautiful. The Animation Business Journal website noted that the demand for anime with 4K resolution is actually increasing within the industry. So expect this to become the norm in the next five years. Uh, and the website believes production IG and Netflix's production will help push the boundaries of, of Japan's hand-drawn technology, uh, hand-drawn anime technology, and that they're going to be creating brand new systems in order to make this thing happen. So there's brand new technology and brand new s- techniques in order for this show to even work. Makes sense. I mean, it's a field that they haven't experimented with, so... Yeah, it's so. So the question is, what do you, what are they gonna do with it? What is it gonna be like? Um, well, I can't watch like, it anyway, so. I mean, we could like pirate it. Yeah, but we can't take full advantage of the four Ks, Matt. The four Ks. Okay, my my computer. My question is because you said hand drawn. Does that mean cell animation or digital? Because digital is still hand drawn. We're talking like I, I'm gonna imagine digital because cell animation isn't done in the industry in Japan anymore. I figured, so. but when you say specifically hand drawn, that's the first thing that comes to my head. I'm pretty sure it's digital. I'm pretty sure it's digital. And um, and again, means- how would you be able to get 4K out of cell animation? Like, if they somehow ended up doing that, imagine 4K like Cowboy Bebop. I think I just heard Spencer come. <laughs> That was uh, that was me taking a delicious sip of my peach uh, 
iced tea and also come. <laughs> mm. Okay. The iced tea is delicious, and I need to change my pants. <laughs> and my pants are moist. And my pants, my, my pants, wow, what is this white stuff? <laughs> is, this uh, cre- is this, oh, is this coffee no, cream? No, no, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. We're not doing the joke. I'm I putting like, a cake like wash my, on that. I cr- like my tea. I like my coffee how I like my women, without a penis. Without a penis. <laughs> I like my coffee the way I like my men. Black. Oh. oh anyway, man. let's move uh, on. But, uh, let's move on uh, to a piece of news that is uh, kind of yikes. Um, oh, this shit. Uh, all right. So we've known we've known for a while, like almost like a year and a half at this point, that J.J. Uh, Abrams picked up the rights to do a live action Your Name uh, version. Uh-huh. Uh, we've known this. We've known. Yeah, we've known this for. We've known this for a while. Um, but we hadn't gotten any news uh, for a, for a little bit. You know how the industry works. It takes like fucking ten thousand years for <laughs> for Hollywood to announce something. Mm-hmm. Um, well. Uh, but we and we know who was writing it. It was a uh, Eric Highriser who wrote Bird Box and Arrival, so someone who knows how to write shit. Uh, well, we finally got a director, um, and it's the the director is going to be the director of the critically acclaimed uh, indie film Five Hundred Days of Summer. Mark Webb. Mm, he also directed okay. the Amazing Spider Man films, right? And notoriously did not get along well with Sony during the production of those films. Uh, he constantly clashed with them in terms of not just just creatively, but also but in terms of budgets, in terms of casting, in terms of okay. Terms so, so the the Amazing Spider-Man films were more like Sony getting their hands. They dirty were than... Sony products. They okay. were fucking films. Uh, okay. They were Sony products. The original Amazing Spider-Man film. Mark Webb wanted it to cost like only eighty million. Apparently, he was going to make it like super small scale and make it basically an indie film, but with a superhero, which sounds what? a lot more interesting than the the cost of fuck that we did get. Mm-hmm. Um, Everyone is <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, the so deadline also reported about the about the ch- now because this is an American remake, they are making changes to uh, fit an American audience. Talk Obviously, about those at- changes, Matt. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, the, I actually the, just- keep in mind that these requests were apparently at the chains of Sinkai himself. So Sinkai was the one who suggested these. Also, um, keep in mind, I have not heard this stuff yet. So, oh, oh my God, boy! Okay. Okay. Not only okay, have Spencer, I not do you know watched- the plot of the original Your Name? Do you want me to give you? Brief yes. synopsis of the original Brief Your Name. Brief synopsis of the original Your Name, because I've not oh, seen right. it yet. So, the original film centers on Taiki, who's a high school boy living in Tokyo who works part-time in a restaurant, and Mitsuha, uh, 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 who, a high school girl living in the town in rural Japan who wants to live in the city. Uh, okay. One day, they begin switching ta- bodies every time they sleep and have, a find a, and have to find a way to communicate with each other to manage each other's lives. Later, they, they try, they, they, when they try to meet up physically for the first time, Taiki discovers a secret that will lead to a race against time to try to save each other. There's a meteor, and it's sci-fi shit, and it's cool. But it's also really sad. Uh, oh, is that but, um, what the, wait, just, is that what the Pop Team Epic thing was? Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! Okay, mm-hmm. that was your name. Okay. Yeah, that that was your name. So that's the plot of your day. Really cool. Sounds really so, cool. So, so they needed to change it for an American audience. This is what they came up with. Just okay. because, because holy shit! Because on the surface, it doesn't sound too bad, but when you dig deeper, it's a big yikes. It's like um, what the fuck? A young, uh, a young Native American woman living in a rural area and a young. Ma- Chicago discovered that they are magically and intermittently swapping bodies. When a disaster threatens to upend their lives, they must journey to meet and save their worlds. All right. Like, all right. So, okay. All right. On the surface, I was like, this doesn't sound too bad. At least they're not whitewashing it. At least they're not whitewashed. At least, you know, Native American rep. That's cool. And then Ooh. you realize that there's a big yikes to that. Because, uh, what, uh, why, you know, what is, uh, what are, uh, what are Native Americans in Hollywood usually portrayed as? Are we talking, like, fucking, like, 
like Wild West style, like no, we're I talking like that. We're talking more like nowadays, like Dances with Wolves and stuff, like that stuff. Oh, kind of like savages. No spiritualists and yeah, stuff. Yeah, spiritualists. They said that this adaptation is going to go more like spiritual than sci-fi. So they're typecasting instead of whitewashing. Yeah. Mm. I think. I'll I don't think Shane's the- too happy about that. I. I, I, I think I'll just stick to the Japanese one. Though. Yeah, please do. Like. I'll just stick to I, a Shinkai. Like I agree with Matt. On the surface, it doesn't seem too bad, but as soon as you realize that this is a Western Hollywood production with a main Native American lead. Woman, by the way. A woman as yeah, well. Like, it's always... Yeah, so... it it, it This spells disaster on several levels. This spells levels. disaster. Unless they... And, appara- and, uh, and uh, apparently this was... Apparently this was the Japanese requested version. So this wasn't their decision. So Shinkai, I don't know. what the fuck are you thinking? I mean, I I, Shinkai doesn't even like your name, and I don't understand why. But he really doesn't. Your name is his best movie, critically, commercially, everyone loves it. And he's like, I just feel like it's unfinished, and I didn't put my all into it, so I kind of. And that's it. why he wants the remake to happen because he's just like, because he's like, I want a Western version because he wants to see if they can do it better than him because he fucking hated his own film. So like, spoilers, was this like, uh, they won't do it better. Was this a, like, okay, he did five centimeters per second, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. A fucking, I think that's his, I think his favorite film he worked on is, like, Garden of the Words, I think. Which is um, weird. Which is one of his weakest ones. Yeah. I, I don't know, Shinkai's probably, Shinkai probably, ha- Shinkai's probably that guy who makes really good films but has ass opinions about the I film. mean, at least it's not <laughs> children who chase lost voices. Yeah, I, I would love you. I that that was one of his earliest stuff, so he probably doesn't like that just from from, from the fact that you know it's earlier on. In and his also work. the fact uh, that it's just Ghibli, like <laughs> I don't know. I no, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe we're just free- maybe I'm just freaking out over nothing. Maybe it turns. Maybe it'll be completely fine, <laughs> um, and like the re- it will actually be really good. Uh, but who knows? Like my thing is that okay. You're gonna re- you're gonna have Mitsuha be a, a a female Native American lead. The direction the story goes in that literally spells disaster. Like, yeah, it can does. you spell because like Native American? Visions. Woman? She has visions. <laughs> like Native American woman. Can you spell disaster victim much? Like exactly. Uh, exactly. You know, you know what would have been really radical because we see Na- because well, we don't have a lot of sadly we don't have a lot of Native American in. Not Native. really. We have Johnny Depp. Most yeah yeah we, I, yeah oh yeah true. But we but, but Do- we do Johnny Depp is insane. Yeah, jo- jo- yeah Johnny Depp, and he's not, he's not even full Native American. Exactly. He's like he's fucking like one sixteenth or some shit like that. Um, fucking um, most of the Native American vet is fucking uh is women you know what really radical have the guy be native american i'm just saying like that would be fucking radical as shit or and we, and, how about and it would neither be of them. Again. Uh, how about neither how about neither or like or neither of them if you wanted something really radical to remove this like fucking make make the guy make the person living in the city native american which would be a break against stereotype yeah um, and that would be like, oh, okay, that sounds really cool, and that's a di- that's a different perspective. But no, this fucking uh, fucking uh, god damn it, <laughs> god damn it, yeah. god damn it. Who so, knows? We'll see, we'll see where it goes. But who did this movie not not, not even happen? Yeah. Like, but you know Hollywood, they'll announce films, scenes will be attached, and they just <laughs> never come out. Um, cause, uh, cause who, who knows, no, but who knows, we'll see. Uh, let's for move a second, on. For a second there, Matt, I thought, I thought it was one, I thought we were talking about Akita, and I was like, I was like, listen, if they make a live action Akita movie, and A, they change the names, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. If I don't have a person screaming Tetsuo and another motherfucker screaming Kanada or Kanada. 
Yeah. Don't make I the actually, movie. I actually had, I actually heard an idea in a pitch for like a, uh, for an Americanized Acura that actually sounded r- though. It was one that fucking, it did change, like it changed the names and it was American, but it used like the setting, like, cause Akita is based on Gain Wars. So, yeah. so their version was that it was going to be an all African American cast and it was going to be focused, it was going to be a commentary on the American game, on the uh, Gain Wars going on in like Detroit and Chicago and stuff. You know oh, what? Awesome. In the right That's hands, cool. that could work. Yeah. And get like yeah. Jordan Peele as someone to direct it who was in the running to direct Akita at one point and was asked. Um, who's the guy who did Black Panther? Ryan Coogler. Ryan Coogler. Or, get fucking um, Ryan Coogler. Or the guy who did um, uh, F. Gary Gray. Yeah, F. Gary Gray. Yeah, get F. Gary Gray. Honestly, yeah, get one of them. They would let – honestly, with that pitch, I'm yeah. like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, that sounds great. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, – and anyways, let's move on. We'll get yeah. sidetracked. Yeah. Um, Let's move on to Fruits Basket, because I want to talk about Fruits hey! Basket. You want to um, talk about Fruits Basket? The cast, is, the cast is... The cast is fall in love. Wait. That's the wrong anime. Hey, hey, it's wrong anime. <laughs> um, all right, so Fruits Basket. The English dub is getting cast because I think... Are they doing, like, a fucking... I'm pretty positive they're this? doing same-day dub. Like, they have to at this point. There's already been, yeah. like, I Laura Bailey has posted photos of her in the booth recording already, so mm-hmm. they're doing a same-day dub. Guaranteed. Uh, so, like, but, um... But, yeah. So, the big news. Half... Most of the cast is returning. Um, they're doing... Which is a big deal because in the Japanese version, the entire cast got cast uh basically everyone got recast in the japanese but here it's a brotherhood situation where in the japanese version for one alchemist the most of the cast with the exception of a couple came back uh were, were cast meanwhile in the english version basically everyone came back uh with the exception of a couple uh laura bailey is back mm-hmm. doing an anime yep. for like, the first time in a long shit. time um um fuck it um uh, Julie, uh, so, some char- some actors have come out of uh, retirement to do this. Um, uh, the 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 uh, uh, Julie Mayfield, who is the voice of the ma of uh, to- the main character's mother, has not voice acted in the anime in like six years, and she's coming back for this. Now, I've never seen Fruit Basket. Me neither. Mm-hmm. But. It's better. I might as well just watch this version. Like, there's a, yeah, there's no reason why we shouldn't be watching this one, right? Yeah, no. Um, I want to go back and watch the original at some point, but at the same time, uh, most of the cast are like Eric Vale's coming back. Eric Vale's coming Eric back. Eric Vale's coming back. Vail's Jerry coming back. Jewell, Chris Sabat. Uh, John Berkheim is coming back. Um, uh, there's been some recasts. Uh, like um, like Akito. Uh, the uh, Akito has been recast. Colleen Clifford will take over for Chad Klein, and um, no, and uh, and this this is the the only recast that doesn't make sense to me is the person that is Kag- is Kagura, who was voiced by Meredith McCoy in the original series. Meredith McCoy is still at Funimation and she's still doing stuff, but she was recast. Um, That's weird. Yeah, and who's she's, they, who's she's they replace her with? Uh, Tia Ballard. Oh, okay. Very interesting choice, uh, because, D, uh, like, a uh, fucking different voice. Um, uh, Kent Wells come back. Eric, the most fascinating one to me is who they're going to get the voice, because he uh, voice Hiro Soma, who is one of, who is the ram, the sheep of the Chinese Zodiac in this world, in, in this, in the show. In the original series, he was voiced by Aaron Dismuke, when Aaron Dismuke oh. was, like, 10. Oh. Oh. So like, when, remember Aaron, when, so like Alphonse level. Yeah, Alpha, this was his fir- this was his first anime role was in Fruits Basket. Uh hmm. it was his debut. Um and he and um it's what got him the Alphonse role in the first place, apparently. Um Well, who are they gonna get to replace him? Do they just get the fucking uh, the voice of Alphonse from Brotherhood? Yeah, Maxi Whitehead. Maxie Whitehead. But even then, he's now like Aaron- Aaron Dismuke is now a man. He's, He's 26 like 26. years old. Well, well, yeah, but um, how old was uh, Alphonse in Brotherhood? Like 14? 14. 
So then he'd be 24 by now. 23, 24. What, what are you talking Aaron, about? Just, you're just 26. I'm on his Wikipedia. No, I'm saying the the voice of Alphonse in Brotherhood. Uh-huh. The not Aaron Dismuke. Uh, Maxie Whitehead was like 25 when she voiced Alpha. Yeah, she's also a woman, oh. Spencer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Now, now Spencer just looks like a sexist prick. Cut that out. Cut that out. Well, I, I can't. Cut that out. Let me just stop the recording right now. No, 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 no. Uh, Cut it in post. Cut it in post. Um, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to, um, I'm just gonna isolate the word woman, and you can put it over what I say man, okay? Or he. Ready? Woman. Woman. There we go. <laughs> isolate that, put, slap that over the audio, nobody will know the difference. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um... Uh, fuck it. Yeah, Fruits Basket. I mean, we all, we're all watching Fruits Basket. Oh, yeah. Though. Absolutely. Like, that's oh, that. We're yeah. all watching Fruits Basket when it airs next season. Yes. All right. Let's watch. We're going to be watching Fruits Basket. And that is that. Good. In other news, I think we, uh, we're we going to briefly go over it because I think it's been talked about the death. But we're going to talk about the. Uh, we're going to briefly sum up our thoughts on the cultural anime awards um, um just stop having anime awards that's that's my opinion just hey, to stop awards just you stop guys like you guys like my hero academia okay it didn't even sweep that much like it, it didn't, didn't sweep that much did i tell you the story on how to uh, my hero academia two heroes got booed oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah it because it did not deserve best movie <laughs> Fuck it, uh, fuck it, did you like, see fucking... Arcana's reaction to it? Oh yeah, he was having, like, a no. fucking mental breakdown. He had to present the fucking award! Oh, did he? Yeah. G. He Arcana had to present the award, like... and on stream, he had, like, the face of, like, he actually, he couldn't say that he wasn't happy, because he's obviously, obviously there as a presenter. Obviously, contractually obliged, so. Yeah. Contractually obliged, and he's like, I'm, he was like, I'm happy for it, but, and then he said a oh, but, I wanted, he wanted, he personally wanted, uh, uh, Mirai to win. I was gonna say, what was actually nominated? Mirai was, was Mirai? nominated for an Oscar. That's what I don't yeah. get. There was, um, there was there was Mirai? two heroes. There was Mirai. Yeah. There was yes. Fireworks, which oh yeah, fireworks. that one. Yeah, but and then the and the and the favorite to win was Liz and the Bluebird. There was um, Liz and the Bluebird. There was Mazinger Z. Mazinger Z. And was, and then um, Masuka Yutai. Uh, Masuka Yutai's uh, Yusa's new film. Oh yeah, the, the one with the really long name. Hmm. What was Liz and the Bluebird who made that? Kyo Annie. Uh, oh, okay. Kyo Annie's, um, Kyo Annie's uh, Sound Euphonium spinoff that's basically been, you, that is like, I think the most universally acclaimed thing that Kyo Annie has ever done. So. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's considering, it, that, that's impressive considering the track record. Uh, but yeah, the show itself was also not great. I was watching it. Um, yeah, it's, um, it was full of memes. And just everyone being kind of fucking stupid. We talking like 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 the cringy memes where it's they like, were dabbing and meme. flossing on camera. Who? Everyone. So I can block them on Twitter. Sure, go for it. I'm a block. Fuck like they you, would, Joey like they the would play, man. like they they would play a fucking video and then would cut back and they would just be dabbing for no reason. Anime was a mistake. And then it cuts to, like, it cuts to, like, people, because, like, it was obviously live, but there were people on a soundstage, and then it would cut to an audience, like, in an auditorium, where they would be presenting stuff. And then it would just cut to the auditorium, and they'd be fucking Fortnite dancing, and being stupid, and I'm like, alright. Like, if you wanted people to, like, actually enjoy this show, you're, this is impressive how you're fucking this up. <laughs> You have good people. You have good anti-tubers that are gonna come on that are gonna come on and be like, hey, you have the fucking anime pope himself. Mm -hmm. You have He Brother presented Facebook Anime of the Year. Anime of the Year, which went to Devil Man. Devil Man, yes. Which hey, yeah. well deserved. I don't agree yeah. with it, but well deserved. Yeah, Devil Man's great, so My oh, pro my uh, biggest problem with the anime awards it's really petty. <laughs> But place further got nothing. 
Yeah. Place Further won no awards. It was nominated for like five things. How did it not win a single award? I'm still Listen, salty about that. The only award I fully agree with is motherfucking Mamoru Miano. That man deserves yes, everything. Yes, he does. Also, why the fuck was Deku nominated again? For best boy? And he won again? <laughs> Because season three happened this year, so we can technically put it on the docket. Can we fucking ban him from being nominated? Because yeah, it's there ridiculous. Were so many, there were so many better boys. Uh, it, yeah, it was kind of a mess. There was Sakata, goddammit. Yeah, there was Sakata. There was fucking... Uh, Tatsumi was there. Yeah, Tatsumi. No, yeah. Kotaro. Yeah, Kotaro. It, it was just a fucking disaster. Like it, it usually mess. is. So, like, I don't see why everyone's so fucking shocked that it was a fucking train Congratulations, Crunchyroll. You have the anime version of the Oscars. I mean, that's, basi that's basically... Fuck, fuck, the yeah, fuck, fuck the Oscars. Yeah, fuck the Oscars. Fuck the anime don't... Oscars. All right, so the worst state about that conversation is because I heard none of it because my internet was having a fucking stroke. Oh, and oh you guys so you, your internet had seconds. the seizure this time, not mine. Okay, yeah, so bits and pieces, no, no, we're, no. Happy that, we're happy that Mamoru Miyono won. Yeah. Um, and fuck Deku. Yeah, uh, but can we ban bullshit. him, please? Ban him. Ban him ban for him further by. nomination. And I went on my tangent about how Place Further won no awards, and that's bullshit. And then I kind of just did like a, like a little song and dance after you. Oh, fuck. Did he drop? Well, I think he did. Hello, Matt. Hey, Matt. Holy fucking shit. Oh, my God. Tell me, <laughs> on a scale of hearing... <laughs> oh, what, 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 what were you at? It, it, was, uh, it was real bad. It was I think so he bad. heard the... I agree. I anyway, okay. Crunchyroll Awards suck. Yeah, bullshit. Fuck you. Fuck the Oscars. Sucks. Vacuums. Shit, you right, son. <laughs> Joke of the century. Joke of the century. Okay, shit. Stopping the recording right now. We're never going to top that. <laughs> That's it. Anime is over. That's it. That's it. I had to stop. It's over. Yeah, gaps canceled. Bye, everyone. I'm deleting the 30. channel. We got to 30 episodes. I think that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Actually, you know that's what? I'm proud of that, but now we're done. Bye. Bye. Anyway, Bye. Uh, the Crunchyroll Awards are a kind of ass. Yeah, they were, they were eh. They were very You eh. watched them live, not actually. He did, yes. Yes. You watched them uh, live. How how bad was it? How bad was it truly? He dropped again. That okay. bad. It was that bad. Man. I think... Is this like a is this like a marketing ploy from Crunchyroll? Do they know Crunchy we're talking shit about them, so they're trying to sabotage our show? Crunchyroll is officially DDoSing Matthew's internet. <laughs> well, it looks like we're never going to get a sponsorship with them. Then, because... Well... Uh, speaking of sponsors, actually. Yeah, please, give us a sponsor. I had to switch over to my phone. Oh, that, that's fine, don't worry. my computer is so bad. That's fine, don't worry literally, about it. Literally, no, literally, my computer has such a seizure, it fucking couldn't find my internet. It, 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 it claimed my internet wasn't working when it was working. Nice. <laughs> we just so, basically said that, that Crunchyroll just DDoSed your fucking internet. Yeah. <laughs> Crunchyroll stole it. Yeah, it's Crunchyroll gone. knows we're talking shit about them, so they're trying to sabotage us. Hey, Crunchyroll, apparently since you, you can hear us, where the fuck are half the dubs that you owe us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, where's Mob? Yeah, where the yeah. fuck is Mob? I thought for sure, okay, side, side tangent for a sec. I thought for sure when they announced that, hey, the Shield dub, the Shield Hero dub's coming out, the day that the episode came out, and now we're doing it same day. I thought for sure that the following Monday they were going to announce, "Hey, Mob Psycho dubs coming out, and it's going to be a one or two episodes behind, but we're going to do it every week from now on." It's been two weeks yeah. since then. Oh, I know, and still nothing. Mm -hmm. So, I honestly don't yes. think that the Mob Psycho dubs even happening at this point. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think it will happen just after the show's done. Yeah, um, probably. Um, but um, anyway, 
Matt, you but, watched uh, the Crunchyroll Awards live. How bad was it truly? Not that bad to be okay. Not to, to be completely honest, it wasn't the worst thing I'd ever seen. It was better than last year's. Um, I liked it more than last year's because it was more. There wasn't as many technical glitches. The technical glitches were all fine. Like technically, it was fine. Um, you had Christina V. Christina V. Is yeah. Bay. Like I love mm-hmm. her, and I love her. She's great. Um, uh, for the for the most of the presenters they got were, were pretty good. They had some good. They had fucking um. They had fucking um. Uh, what's his name? I forget his name. Um. The voice of, of Ryan Potter there. They had Ryan Potter there. Yeah. Which was dope. Um, um, so it wasn't too bad. The pro- My issues with it were the same as last year. They focused too much on flivolous stuff. It feels very – it feels – it feels like that – If it, it feels unscripted, which is normally fine. But, like, here it, like, obviously is completely unscripted. Yeah. Um, the the well, thing is unscripted is fine as long as there's, like, a general direction – that you're going with, but there clearly was there was no direction, direction here. Well, I'm was... going to ask something very important, Matthew, which is, did it feel like an ad? Not really. Like, buy Crunchyroll uh-huh. Premium for $7.99 a month. Um, th- no, thankfully, it didn't feel like an ad too much. Um, there was some ad... The, there were there were stuff that was showed during the, um, during the awards, but, like, that was, like, it was all, like, um... Like just reveals and stuff like other anime coming out. Like they were like they they revealed a uh, that um that the no that there's a that there's a Crunchyroll original anime coming. I think from the creator of like uh from the from what uh so someone at White Fox or something like. But base so basically there's like they just announced like a new anime coming and that's pretty much it. Um. Other than that, it didn't really feel like an ad. Well, considering Devilman Crybaby one and the fact that that's a Netflix show. Mm-hmm. Um, um, also, pretty much everyone in the award, uh, from what I could tell, everyone wanted Devil Man to win um, at mm-hmm. the awards. So, from what I and from what and from what I've read from the from the people who were judging it, like the judges, because I follow a couple. Apparently, Devil Man was almost unanimous to vote in terms of judges for Devil Man. So, mm-hmm. so I think it would have won, even if fans didn't vote, it would have been going and gone to Devil Man regardless. Um, I mean, again. It, it very much deserved it. So, um, so in in that case, um, I think we're pretty. I, I think we're pretty much done talking about that, though, because yeah, it, honest, it wasn't uh, great, but you know, it's a thing that exists. No, they, there's ways they can improve it, and I think that it's a posi- that I that they can really improve on it if they, you know, fix up some of the bugs. Uh, dump fan voting, get rid of that shit. Uh, like I'm tired of it. Um, but uh. Other than that, I think we're pretty much. Uh, I think we're pretty much. I think we're pretty much ready to move on. Um, this next piece of news is a news for Shane and Shane only. Um, um, you like Radiant, right? I do. Mm, I'm the one who originally reported about this in the Discord. Yes, you did. Uh, you like Radiant, right? Yes. Uh, well. As we all know, Radiant wrapped up because it was 21 episodes for some reason. Yeah, some um, weird episode count, but whatever. Um, but there's a second season coming for Radiant. I'm, ver- I'm very happy about that. Also, will also be 21 episodes, so they're not. So they're sticking with it. They're sticking with the weird episode count, but it will be two. Se- it will be another season of 21 episodes. Uh, did you like Radiant, Chain? I did like Radiant. Like there. There's some there's a couple issues I have with it. Mainly that it feels very generic in terms of shonen and you know, a lot of it I feel like there is a lot of filler thrown in there for some reason cuz it doesn't really get going until the second half. So there's some pacing yeah. issues. But overall I enjoyed my time with it. Uh the last arc really picked things up and kind of turned my opinion around. Um but yeah, I was uh, watching the last episode that uh, aired just last week, and I was saying, this is definitely ending on a cliffhanger, so I really hope that there's going to be another season to continue it. If there is, I will gladly watch it. And sure enough, at the end of that episode, they had a full teaser for the next season that's coming way sooner than I expected. It's starting in uh, October. the fall. This yeah. And it will be the same lane too, so double core once again, 21 episodes. Yeah, so I'm happy about that. I really enjoyed my time with Radiant, despite the issues I had with it, and I will gladly watch season two when it starts. 
Yeah, in October. It's going to get b- absolutely blasted by My Hero that season. But Yeah, but here's the thing. Now I'll have two Saturday morning shonens. Yeah, Shane will be, like, in his fucking pajamas with his fucking cereal, just sitting at his fucking TV, just watching here's, My Hero. Here's the thing. That's entirely true. Okay, but why not add a third shonen? <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. Probably Spencer's. Pa, pa, we're gonna be talking about pa, what's pa, what's slowly becoming. I think Spencer's most anticipated show of the damn year. Yeah. Um, uh, Great segue, Fire by Force. the way. Fire, Fire Force. Um, Fire, Fire Force has been already picked up. Force. Fire Force has already been picked up by what we call Funimation. Has picked it up. Um, Which means they're both simulcasting and simul dubbing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, they're going all in on it, um, and it's and there's and there's now an English and now there's a tra- there's an English English sub trailer out for those who wish to. Yeah, Spencer, did out. you see that new trailer? Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Just like um, just like my can of iced tea right now, I was empty inside before I watched that. <laughs> okay. All right. I did listen. I did not know that I needed a firefighting shonen anime Wait. made by David Productions from the author um, of Soul Eater. Yeah, from the from the creator and author of Soul Eater. Did your internet come back, buddy? Did your internet come back? I don't think it did. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go on without him. But yeah, no. the th- The thing I love about I it. I tried going back. I tried going back to my lap, my computer, and hone it new. Yeah, just stay on your phone, dude. Just plug your phone in. Just. Yeah, that's what I'm just gonna do. Okay. Keep that percentage up. But what I was gonna say is the thing that the thing that's got me most interested about Fire Force is that the MC is a firefighter that has fire powers. He has fire footsteps. Like does, what? Yeah, does he? Does he? No. He, I have a. Th- I have a theory. Is that they use fire to fight fire? That's fucking stupid. And if that's the case, that's the most shonen bullshit I've ever heard. I was gonna say you can't say shit stupid when it's made by David Motherfucking Production. Yeah, but let's be real. David Production does the stupidest shit, and it's all oh, great. That's all they I do. Really have- they, they fight fires, but the oh, but he may but he's different because he's has the power of fire, but he wants to be a firefighter. He's the plucky shonen protagonist who's like, I want to be a firefighter, but you have fire powers. You can't be a firefighter. Ooh. I'm gonna be the best firefighter in the damn world, and then he blows up a building. Dang! <laughs> There's no more fire now. Let me this look at the show. Looks people. fucking rad. The show looks rad. It's gonna be the dumbest show ever made, I think. Oh, incredibly! <laughs> Fucking um, remember when JoJo was the dumbest show ever made? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is easily gonna top that in terms of sheer uh stupidity. Yeah, part five, King okay. Crimson. You haven't okay. seen much yet, have you? No, but don't worry, it just works. <laughs> okay, so here is a base synopsis of Fire Force. <laughs> Give it to me. So, year 198 of the solar era in Tokyo, special fire brigades are fighting against a phenomenon called spontaneous human combustion, where (laughs) human beings are turned into living infernos called infernals. While the... While... The infernals are first-generation cases of spontaneous human combustion. Later generations possess the ability to manipulate flames while retaining human form. Shinra Kusakabe, a youth who gained the nickname The Devil's Footprints for his ability to ignite his feet at will, joins the Special Fire Force Company 8, which composes of other flame users as they work to extinguish any infernals they encounter. As a faction that is creating infernals appears, Shira begins to uncover the truth behind a mysterious fire that caused the death of his family 12 years ago. Wait, 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 wait. The, in- the, wait, wait, wait. the entire Fire Force has fucking fire powers? Yes. They're fighting, Matt. Oh my God! They're, they're, okay. fighting. they're fire fighting fire with fire. With fire. So okay. So here are some of the other characters. We have Arthur Boyle, 
who has the ability to fabricate and control plasma, which he uses in the formation of a sword called Excalibur. Oh my fuck. Maki Oze, who uses his her second generation powers to create living fireballs, which also used to power her iron owl projectile weapons. <laughs> Iris, who is adamant and uses prayer to ease the pain of the infernals. Um, Victor Leaked, who's a mad scientist. Um, and Vulcan Joseph. Also known as the God of Fire and Smithing. <laughs> this sounds fucking retarded. <laughs> Dude, one of the guy's names is fucking Leonard Burns. <laughs> Leonard Burns? Leonard Burns, Kareem Flam, Ono Yongo. This is gonna be the greatest thing ever! Spencer's, oh, I think we found Spencer's anime of the uh, fucking decade. <laughs> October can't come soon enough for Spencer. <laughs> Spencer's gonna be the first one. Fire Force is gonna be up two seconds later. Spencer's already finished the first episode of Fire Force. Dude, they have a character called Schlop. Schlop? Which is a talking mole! <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking mole, dude! I haven't heard him lose his mind this much in forever. Spencer. <laughs> it's a talking mole! It's a talking mole named Schlop! No, that's the title of the fucking episode, A Talking Mole. <laughs> okay, Spence is losing his mind. Uh, we need to move on. <laughs> I'm gonna get a glass of water. I'll be right <laughs> It's a fucking mole <laughs> The fact that he's laughing maniacally as he's walking yes. away. Help. Okay, uh, let's move on, please. Uh, I don't know how we can stop that. We can just end the podcast right there. Yeah, fuck it. Fucking, <laughs> I'm back. Oh. Okay. Uh, fucking, alright, we got one last piece of news. Um, oh, this, this is the one today. that dropped this morning, right? This was the one that dropped this morning. Um, that uh, that y'all don't know about because I don't no. know about it. Um, so there's an original anime coming uh, sometime this su in in the summer called that they announced uh, that anime studio Nexus, who's a newer anime studio, they did Chivalry of, the Fa of a Failed Knight, um, as well as a couple other shows. Um, they were Grand Blam, uh, Grand Blam. Uh, it is going to be. It is uh, now. Normally, I I'll be like, okay, all right, all right, sounds fine to me. Um, but what really gets me interested is who they got doing it. My, you probably recognize that name because we covered his show earlier in the year. Um, you want to you director. want to repeat that real quick? Yeah, Masa Masaharu Watanabe. We covered his show earlier this year. He he. Made his directorial debut directing Re Zero. Mm. Um, and he will be directing this. Mm -hmm. um, um, along with and and, and Shinichiro Otsusaka, who is the light novel illustrator for V Zero, is designing the entire cast for this. So it's pretty much the V Zero team coming back for this. And not doing Re Zero. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into that, um, because that's a problem. But uh, we'll get into that. What's Juki, the problem? No, Juki spent. So there's an anime. So to cap out for Spencer, there's an anime coming called Grand Blam, um, yeah. in the summer. It's an original anime series developed by Anime Studio Nexus. It's going to be directed by Masahiro Watanabe, who directed his directorial debut with Re Zero. Um, okay. Um, and it's going. And the guy who plays, who does the light novel illustrations for the for the original Rizio light novel will be designing the entire cast. Is going to be the character designer. Um, that sounds good. Um, Juki Hanada, who who is the writer for both Love Lives series, both Visional and Sunshine, as well Sunshine. as Sound Euphonium, is going to be the writer on this. Um, uh, and no, no, and 
the and here is a brief synopsis the anime will take place in a world that once featured that once that once had magic uh, the magic used to exist in this world but due to its unuse people just forgot about it and now it's considered extinct um the story begins when two high when a high school student meets a transfer student from germany on a night with a full moon and some and a, on a night with a full moon and some shit happens involving magic for the first time in several several years so that's all we got um that's all we got now the question is how does this affect re-zero well um, they're not doing re-zero clearly to do this so yeah they're not doing re-zero which means that re-zero see that that re-zero season two ain't happening any anytime soon um which at least until this is done is sad because uh, but at the same time i love this director so yes. I would love I love to see him do more stuff, because um, I think that he's great, um, and I do think that uh, I do think that uh, seeing him, uh, I think him just getting more work is great, is just great. And I'm gonna be watching this in the summer, definitely. Yeah. Because uh, 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 when is summer season? Is that the next one? The next Spen- is Spencer. Spring. What comes oh, after yes. winter? Spencer. Summer. Summer. Fire Force broke his brain. Fire Force. The talking Force mole. Me. Listen, <laughs> every day is every day is hot when it's on fire. <laughs> every day is hot when it's a fire force. Every day is fire force day. All right. Um, that's all the news we have today. Um, we'll briefly go over some anime sales, but not, we'll make it pretty. Was great. that the big thing that dropped an hour ago? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was the big thing that dropped an hour ago. Um, we'll we'll briefly go over sales charts just to get them out of the way uh, very, very briefly. Um, the only piece of news that really impresses me is the fact that um, – and what uh, it, it, that really uh, catches my eye is the fact that um, – is that Goblin Slayer started, start, started uh, selling. Oh. Um, and it's doing uh, massively underperforming. Um, much more so than expected. Um, it Oof. was it, it sold it sold about three thousand um, Blu-rays. Um, to be fair, it was a limited first pressing of it, so it wasn't the um, it wasn't the um, it wasn't like the the like the fi- the first like the final like uh, the, like the main release. It was a limited first pressing for fans, um, but still, that's not a good. Those usually sell better than that. So yeah, that ain't a good sign. That's not a good sign for going forward, especially since they already confirmed the season two. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. They may have jumped the gun there. Um, <laughs> they may have jumped the gun there. Uh, meanwhile, Zomb- uh, meanwhile, Zombieland Saga actually went up between volumes. Oh, um, okay. It's its second volume just came out, sold twenty thousand in its first week. Jesus. Okay, so we're getting a it's second. It's blowing season. up. Zombieland Saga is getting to like love live levels of popularity right now. That's what I like to hear. So we're getting a second season at some point. We're, we're not, not gonna get a sec- We're not just getting a second season. We're gonna get a movie, a spinoff game, gotcha game, a fucking. We're gonna get TV fucking show. plushies. <laughs> Listen, I don't think you understand. As a love live fan. Those gotcha games are absolute cancer. Okay, I need, I they need will a. I need steal a, your fucking soul. I need a Spencer, sake it, plushie like now. It's Spencer, Spencer's Spencer's uh, Spencer's money has been taken by those fucking games. Listen, if it wasn't the the Love Lift gotcha game, it was the Bungo gotcha game. It was the if Bungo the, one. If if it wasn't the Bungo gotcha game, it was the Bang Dream gotcha game. If it wasn't the Bang Dream gotcha game, it was the other motherfucking Love Live fuck. <laughs> there's two Love Live gotcha games? Dude, there's multiple. <laughs> and if it wasn't either of those, it was the Idol Master gotcha game. And if it wasn't the Idol Master gotcha, gotcha game, I play a lot of games. You know they have a Pop Team Epic gotcha game now where you only what? get two. <laughs> Sorry, what? No, the, basically, no, basically, it's a, it's a fucking, it, uh, it's a, it, it was a made as a meme. I need to go look it up because it's fucking hilarious. All right, of course, so it's a meme. It, they made a pop team epic gotcha game. Um, uh, let me, uh, fucking, let me uh, search that. It's a Crunchyroll article. Um, uh, fucking, let me load it up. 
Um, uh, fucking. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Crunchyroll, for loading in it. So, um, uh, they basically brought it to again. Just released today. Uh, it is a self-described shitty app that is available for both Android and iOS. And you get, take control of PPMe and Popoco as they, you know, the fucking Yakuza episode. Yes. yes. You fight them. You fight. You basically fight. End, you mm-hmm. basically fight endless waves of ta- of uh, t- uh, Takashobo employees. Um, and you and has a game mechanic. You can recruit them, and and, and and you can recruit them. And the big deal about it is that fucking um, fucking um. Fuck it, uh, I, I've ever said, like, fucking, um, fucking, uh, oh, and it offers a 10,000 free rolls for new players. Oh. <laughs> Why would it give you that many? That's, it offers 10,000 you know, free rolls, and it eats Takashobo is the exact same strength and exact same power. <laughs> There's no difference. That is that is the most fucking B Kabokawa thing to do. It's so fucking funny. The entire thing why, is pretty. Why is that just? If somebody ever asks you what Pop Teen Epic is, <laughs> it's that. Tell them that. Just give them that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Pop Team Epic once made a gacha game where new players get ten thousand free rolls, but there's no difference in anything that they get. <laughs> It, let's move on. Um, yes, please move on. Yes. Uh, and I think we're pretty. I think we're pretty much done with um with the uh, news, which means we can time to finally move on to our featured anime of the podcast, and it is a good one. Oh, it's a good one. Hey, hey um, Matthew. One of, yeah. Uh. Spoiler alert. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get. We'll to get that. to that. Spoiler alert. We'll we'll yeah, we'll get to that. Um. Co- uh, fuck it. Our, our featured anime of the podcast is the action, is the action sci-fi mech drama known as Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rebellion, directed by Goro Tenguchi and written by writers uh, Ichi- uh, Ichiro Ukochi and Hiroyuki Yoshino. Um, and it's from Studio Sunrise and aired for fifty episodes. And aired for fifty episodes from October fifth, two thousand six to Jan- September twenty eighth, two thousand eight. Um, and we're going to be covering both seasons here on the podcast because it was split two separate, very individual seasons. And and uh, and before we get started, due to a complaint I got on Twitter Fuck from a dumbass it. with an egg. Fuck um, you, you egg bitch. Uh, um, we have to do this now. Um, yep. uh, the following discussion of Code Geass will contain massive spoilers for the show. If you've not seen Code Geass... We have it in the link in the description. It's currently licensed by Funimation. You can go find it in the link below. Yeah, actually, you know it. what? Let, g- give me a second to see, because I'm pretty sure it's free on Funimation's website. So if you it's haven't seen Kokios, the link's right there. Go ahead. And it's also been out for over a decade. And also, to the egg dude who didn't use common sense to think, hey, if we went out of our way to have a featured show, to have a in-depth discussion about on our show... Just assume there's gonna be spoilers, buddy. Like egg bitch. G- fuck you, egghead. <laughs> fuck you, egghead. I'm sorry. You're probably like a, a, a loyal viewer, and I'm sorry, but you're like, probably come like on. a nice. Per- like you're probably actually a nice person who is just a bit taken aback. But come the fuck on, dude, or do that, or non-binary. Egg- I don't want to judge you, little egg bitch. You- egg. <laughs> All right, but um, but yes. Uh, we'll be we'll be cuff- we will be talking about both seasons of Code Geass. The first season of Code uh, we're gonna talk about start with the first season of Code Geass. So the first season of Code Geass, first season of Code Geass set, is set in an alternate world, in an alternate history Earth, where Britain, where 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 Great Britain lost the Revolutionary War, and uh, won no won the Revolutionary War against America, um, but also lost against but because of that lost against Napoleon. In France, and they were forced to and completely move to North America. This for though this basically forced basically made them take over the entirety of the place, uh, the, the entirety of the continent, and then they and led at least the world we know 
in Code Geass today, where the world is mostly run by a monarchy called uh, called the king uh, called uh, basically the nation, the big nation of Britannia, which controls basically the majority of the world and invaded and even invaded Japan for their for their rare mineral known as sakuradite, which they needed to pilot, which they needed to control their new mechs known as nightmare frames. The story picks up, uh, I would say around a decade, uh, like around a decade after the initial invasion of Japan. Japan is now a sovereign state of Britannia. The people don't like that, but you know, not much you can do about it. And mostly, it's mostly peacetime right now in Japan, with the exception of the fact that there's a couple terrorist organizations trying to free Japan from Britannia's clutches. Because it's one Britannian student, known as Lelouch Lamprude, gets involved in one of these terrorist attacks, and through the course of several, through the course of several encounters, receives a power from a mysterious green-haired girl known as the Gios, a power that allows him to basically um, give uh, to tell anyone. Uh, what to do, and they'll do it. It is it. Uh, it gives them complete control over one's free will. With this, and uh, with this, along with uh, his desire to, uh, along with his newfound, or at least we assume, newfound desire to help out the people of Japan, he joins. He forms his own terrorist organization known as the Black Knights in an effort to defeat the evil nation of Britannia while at the same time come into conflict with an old friend of his known as Suzaku Kururugi who who unlike the terrorists wishes to change the Britannia from within and has joined the Britannia military and thus comes into conflict with Lelouch on several organizations that's a complex description and I think that's probably the best description you can get because Code Geass is a very very complex and complicated show to talk about because there's a lot of stuff to talk about here we're gonna start with Shane because Shane is probably the uh, is the going to be the most interesting here because he's the first. This is the first time he's ever seen Code Geass. Yep. Shane, what yep. did you think of the first season of Code Geass: Lelouch of the Rebellion? Okay, so I went into this knowing nothing. Uh, it's the first time I've ever seen it, and to gravely oversimplify my opinions on this show, after watching it. I'm thinking of switching around my top 10 list to fit it somewhere in there. Because, holy God. <laughs> like, I haven't watched a show that from second one has gone this hard. Like, Matt warned me beforehand. It goes I hard. I warned him. Yeah. I warned. You warned me. It goes hard. But I, I didn't realize it went quite this hard. Like, I would... There is rarely a second to catch your breath watching the show because it moves at such a fucking clip. So much stuff is happening. It's all so vastly interesting. And Lelouch is my boy. I love him. I, I love my little lamp rouge. He, he, Lelouch is great. I love him. Like, the, this show's a fucking trip. Like, from second one all the way through to the very end, episode 50, it is just a nonstop trip. To give you a give everyone in the audience a fucking description on how insane this show is, my my synop my very my longer than usual synopsis doesn't even scratch the surface as to what this oh, show no. is. Not even close. That's like the first like four episodes. No, it doesn't doesn't even not even the first four episodes. Like even in the first episode, there's other stuff going on. I didn't even touch on the fact that the terrorist organizations have infighting between them. I didn't. Yep, true. I, I'm not talking about the political the, the 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 political debate going on. I am not. I didn't touch on any of the um, on the whole on the stuff with the the on like the Britannian like the stuff within the Britannian military itself. Um, the fact that you the the fact that uh, I I'm not I didn't even touch on I I only briefly touched on the Gios stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, like there's so much in this show. Spencer, what do you think of Code Gios? So I finished Code Geass, like, for the first time three, four, four years ago. Four years yeah. ago. No, three, three years ago at this point. Three, four years ago. Um, so basically, I've been watching it for a while. Uh, I, I, I went back and I watched a couple of choice episodes just to kind of get my mind back into the, the what this show is, and looking back on my mouth, uh, 
first year of university, Spencer was a fucking idiot. Uh, this show is outstanding. I still have some issues that I'll get into with it, but as a whole, this not only succeeds, but surpasses expectations. And Lelouch might be one of my favorite protagonists in an anime. Yes. Like, ever. Uh, good fucking show. And, it, it, and if you like Mecha, then there's going to be some Mecha designs for you later on, trust me. If you oh. like titties... You, right, you're Shane. covered here. You're... All right, Shane. Oh, there's some gonna... big ass motherfucker. Here. We'll get into we'll get into that. Sorry, uh, I just we'll I just there. had I just had to. I couldn't help myself. All right, all right. Um, uh, I know that Shane. This show to me uh, is this is an important show to me. Um, uh, this is this show. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be very I'm gonna be upfront. This is in my top five anime of all time. So I fucking love this show. Uh, I love it. What's so fucking much? Wasn't it also the first show anime that you ever finished? Mm, uh no, it was not. Okay, um, but it was the first one. It was the first. It was the one I fin. It, it was. It was the first one where I actively failed a class to try to finish it. Um, so it was back in high school. Um, want to know why I may failed math, Spencer? Was it because of this fucking show? It was because of code. <laughs> Yeah. See, we uh, have our priorities set here on the gap. See, I failed math because I suck at math. Yeah, same. I also suck at math. I also suck at math, so that also that didn't help. But I also was watching Code Geass. Um, this but, um, also, this anime has the greatest uh, look into Vic Mignogna's psyche. Oh, ayo, uh, Bradley. You just had to take the low blow, didn't you? Oh, 100 percent. Oh. Oh, don't put um, that um, shit on women. <laughs> um, but um, um, let's. Uh, but uh, this show's great. Um, if there's any show I could go back and erase from my mind to watch again, it'd probably be Code Geass. Um, because some of the shit in this show, fucking. When I first saw that, I was I I was floored. Like I, from I, the I, very fucking beginning, episode one, it's already established. Hey, you're in for a fucking trip, buddy. Like, strap yourself in. It's only gonna get crazier from here. Like, yeah, like, it's insane. Um, this show is nuts, um, in the best way possible. Um, um, let's, let's dive deeper. Um, uh, what's your favorite episode from season one of Code Geass, Spencer? Me? Uh, one second, I have it right here. It is episode 14, Geass vs. Geass. Oh, oh, this is a good one. Oh, this is a Mao? good one. Yes. Oh, so this is a good one. Let's talk about episode uh, 14. You know what? I agree, Spencer. This was on my potential list when I first when I first got through. Where do we start? Where do we start with this episode? Actually, where do we start? So I'm gonna start with Mao. Um. So Mao is our first introduction into the idea that there is not just one Gios. Mm -hmm. Any. Any contract that you make with either C2 or B2 um, to get to to be given the Gios contract will give you a Gios. And we also learn that not all Gioses are the same. While Lelouch's Gios, the Gios of Absolute Order, is the basis of, hey, I can get you to do anything, but I can only get it to do you once. You know, I, do, I don't tell you one thing. Only works on one person once. Mao's is he can hear people's thoughts. He can read minds. However, like this show really likes to do, there's a downside to every Gios. Uh, Volusia's is once again, it only works on a person once. Mao's is he can't turn his off. So he is constantly bombarded with the thoughts and feelings and inner voices of everybody around him to the point where he now wears headphones that are noise canceling and have the words of C2 who gave him his Dios and then disappeared. This episode is a mental battle between Mao and Lelouch. Don't forget about that Shirley. It, Shirley's there as well, yes. And Shirley who, you know, gets caught in the middle of it because she's Shirley and she's adorable and we love her, but God damn it, Shirley. Um... 
And this mental battle, which I think is a chess game, it is. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the most intense chess, chess game chess of game it's, it's the chess game on the trolley, right? Yes. Yeah. It's the most and... intense. It's the one where uh, Lelou, where they fucking Lelouch screams no, and a piece lands on the ground. Yeah. Um. It's really really good, just the scene by itself. But it also has one of the most emotionally intense scenes at the end of the episode, where Shirley is forced to shoot Lelouch, and overcome by grief and guilt, Lelouch looks oh, at Shirley. God. And uses his geos on her. I and forgot about this ending. Memories, and erases her memories of everything that has happened. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is not only tough for, from a character perspective, because it's very obvious that both Lelouch and Shirley hold some form of romantic feelings for each other. Um, but just the idea that, he, that Lelouch has to use just to protect her from herself which makes something that happens in season two even more sad. And this episode is perfection from start to end. And it's like the best in season one. The, episode 14 is so good. Like it, it's mm -hmm. um, on a, honestly, that entire arc with Mao is really good. Um, yeah. Like there's really, really good stuff there. Now, Shane, what's here's, your favorite now here's the thing. Episode 14 is amazing, but Matt, what's the real answer? Uh, my favorite episode of the season is episode 22, Bloodstained Yuffie. That's the um, correct answer. <laughs> Bloodstained Yuffie. Um, this episode, holy fuck. Yeah, uh, for those who are unaware, so... this is this is the, the slaughter episode. Um, oh, yeah. If, you, if we're talking most shocking, unexpected, literally out-of-nowhere curveballs in anime, this might be up, up there as one of the best executed. The, Cause this the thing that gets me about this episode is that the entire disaster is literally caused by a, by mistake. a mistake. No, it was it was a hubris. A hu the fucking Lelouch You fucking that he idiot! <laughs> Lelouch, like an idiot. By the way, Lelouch is simultaneously a genius and a fucking fucking idiot um L L lelouch is actually the epitome of the greek idea of the tragic hero because he 100 percent has the ability to be the smartest and most unstoppable person but he's so cocky because of his he's so arrogant yeah he's, he's so like arrogant he's like hey i have this power that i can use to control anyone to do whatever i say i could be like hey yuffie why don't you go slaughter all the japanese haha <laughs> just kidding oh wait my geos can't turn off oh shit you're actually going to slaughter the japanese now wait 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 Fuck. no 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 uh fucking um fucking it's it's the uh, lelouch this entire episode is the epitome of the meme of like the of the upgrade meme uh, upgrade no sh wait shit go back Wait, um, shit, delete, delete. <laughs> fucking, um... What gets me about this episode is that for, like, the first two-thirds, it's completely normal. Yeah. And, like, it's... Like, you're, and you're just like, all right, this is making complete sense. And then out of nowhere, just... Hey, you can kill all... Like, it's I like, can just order you. Yeah. Kill all the Japanese. And you're like... And then she and, grabs and, a gun. <laughs> and you're like, no, wait. And then she just starts... Literally murdering. Oh yeah, she starts mowing Terrible. people down in the streets. Like, yeah. And the worst thing about this is, is that one, Lelouch never in Lelouch was actually going to work with Euphemia. Yeah, he was going to give everything up. He was going to have the Black Knights work with Euphemia to create the Japanese Free Zone. Like what, what, everything was falling into place, and then he up. had to go and be a cocky bitch. This anime would have been over in twenty-two episodes. Oh yeah, that would have yeah. been the end right there. Like, the hey, like, hey, I'm Zero. Uh, my Black Knights are gonna work with uh you, and we're gonna create the zone, and we're gonna free the Japanese. That's it. But then he had to be cocky. He had to be a little bitch. And then Euphemia, against her will, slaughtered everybody. Slaughtered everybody, thus ruining Britannia's, arguably ruining Britannia's reputation indefinite forever yeah. oh yeah um, and condemning euphemia like condemning yes. euphemia ruining her reputation even among britannians um 
because even the some of the even the Britannians are like hell. That's fucking dude, like, that's fucked Yuffie, up. What the fuck? Um, or like fuck the fuck. Like Cornelia was like, what the hell? Um, this this isn't the Yuffie I know. What the fuck happened? Uh, fucking uh, what the um, fucking uh, fucking um, it 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 hardened Lelouch. Um, fucking um, it hardened Suzaku. Um, fucking poor Suzaku, dude. Um, poor Suzaku. And poor Lelouch, like, because he had to kill Euphemia to stop her. He had to yep. kill Euphemia, and f- fucking Suzaku, and Suzaku was just in the middle of this. And at this point, I'm pretty sure, like, if, if, like, lit- like, fucking, at this point, Euphemia was like, oh, yeah, I love Suzaku. Suzaku was like, oh, yeah, I love Euphemia. Ouch. They were pretty much about the fuck. Um, oof. But, and then, oof. Yeah, the ensuing um, massacre is, like, brutal, too. It's hard it's to It's brutal, watch. it's disturbing, it's really violent. This is really violent. Like, it's, like, I normally don't talk about, I'm normally, like, not, like, I don't care about violence, but this was fucking violent. Uh, this was... It's, it's just because it was so out of left field, it made it that much more disturbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was, like... It was some. It was something else, and fucking just this entire that entire episode is fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it does lead to like the ending arc, which is oh, so good, so good. Like the last like couple of episodes of this season are like, oh, the battle at fucking um, the, the battle at Tokyo, and so oh, mm-hmm. 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 so good, so so good, um. Now let's talk about characters. Now, Code Geass has a lot of characters. So um, many both. characters. Like this is a this is like ensemble cast. Um, but there's only one favorite. Uh, there's only one favorite. Spencer, who was your favorite character of season one of Code Geass? Oh. My, okay, okay, better question. Was it Lelouch? Um yes, it was Lelouch. Okay, we all have Lelouch then. We all yeah, have we all one. have Lelouch. Because okay. Yeah. Lelouch is amazing. First I love season him. is hundred percent Lelouch. Uh, I had a couple others, but I'm like, there's just so many of them. Lelouch is so above and beyond everyone else in this cast. Like, it's actually criminal. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the, the Lelouch feels like Lelouch is basically thing. He is one of the most complex, engaging, interesting protagonists I've ever seen in an, in an anime like this. Because because he's the type of he's the type of protagonist he he's his entire thing is like in any other show i feel like the what makes us such an interesting protagonist is that in an other in another kind of show he'd be the like the main and he'd be the main antagonist and everyone would be like he like, like suzaku would have been the protagonist in a different show yeah, this is Lelouch this would be an anta- would have been an antagonist, and everyone would have been praising him for like how being like a complex, interesting, fucking like uh, relate like sympathetic villain villain character. This is one hundred percent. You once you see my list of favorite characters, you realize oh shit, Spencer has a type because uh, Light Yagami is the same way for me. Mm-hmm. I was just where, gonna say where Light and Lelouch, ironically, also with L's. Um, are both these like I'm gonna make this very clear? They're not good people. No, definitely not. <laughs> Lelouch might have a quote unquote right idea, but he has a conscience on like light. Yeah, Lelouch has yeah. a conscience. Lelouch has a conscience, but they're still not good people. They're still manipulative and don't really give a shit mm-hmm. per se. But Lelouch is one of these characters where you kind of like. First off, shout out to Johnny Young Bosch. Oh god, his performance! His Ugh. performance as Lelouch. Actually, shout out to the whole cast. Yeah, the dub is fucking excellent. Dub is fucking excellent. Um, but Johnny Young Bosch has the kind of tone and cadence of this this person who knows he's arguably the smartest person in the room but tries his best to not let people know that he knows. And I it's... think... Oh. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, and it's just... Anyway. It just um, works. Just, uh... Well. And just, um... What makes Lelouch such an... In- what makes Lelouch work as a protagonist um, is that 
Yeah, well, he is the he has his like he's definitely an antihero in that he is like he manipulates people. He very much would be a villain of his own story, but mm -hmm. but and here's the but and why I think what makes him such a great character is that what makes you relate to him is the fact that he's doing all these things and yet he still the people he cares about he genuinely cares about yes he's not a sociopath he's not a psychopath he just he's just doing what he thinks is the right thing to do and he when when someone close to him dies or is killed or is injured or something bad happens he gets emotional he gets mad he makes dumb human human he mm. makes very human decisions that yeah are dumb in hindsight but no dumb in hindsight like the stuff like the everything with yuffie in this season is are dumb human decisions that yeah are stupid but guess what humans make stupid decisions and no and and uh, and if anything you could argue lelouch is more driven by emotion than he is logic he's a smart man but he is not an emotionally smart man mm -hmm. at all. Um, and he, and he knows it. He knows it. Um, like the stuff with Shirley, it was a stupid decision for him to white her memories. Yeah, you didn't have, have to go that himself. far, Lelouch. Uh, you didn't have to go that far, but he was driven by emotion and he didn't want to do it. He felt he had to and he felt real bad afterwards. Um, I just love Lelouch. Yeah. Shane, how much do you love Lelouch? Okay. The thing that gets me about Lelouch is it's something that you just talked about. He is the most human character. Like, from the get-go, he is just an ordinary student who, sure, he has his he has his inside opinions. Like, he, ha he has a certain way he feels about the situations that he's in. He's like, he's like but, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm Britannian, but Britannia's kind of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't like Britannia because of what they did to my home, but I can't openly, you know... I can't openly disregard them because, you know, society rules. Just like a he normal human person would. And then he gets mm -hmm. caught up in this extreme situation that gives him an opportunity to fully express who he is as a person. And, like, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but if you were th if you were Lelouch thrown into that situation, I you'd probably take it. Like, let's be real. I would do, I would do the same thing. Yeah, so. exactly. And that's what makes him feel so human, is he was a normal person who was caught up in all of this bullshit, and much like a human would, he makes stupid decisions that don't always work out, but he feels it's the right thing to do. He feels that in his heart, this is the best decision I could possibly make right now. And sure, it doesn't always work out, it gets people killed, but he doesn't fall on his morals. He doesn't fall on his ambitions. He has a goal, and he's going to obtain it, However, he sees fit. He just wants, and I think also what I think makes him human is the fact that yeah, like considered like Light Yagami. Light Yagami wants to kill all the criminals, which is yeah, relate yeah yeah because yeah, fuck criminals. But yeah. at the same time, like he goes way too far with he it, goes, and it's like he goes fuck you beyond what is the bounds of like socially acceptable. Like yeah. yes, we get it. You want to kill he uh, kill all the criminals? That's fine. And I think it shows a really good, like, when he loses the Death Note the first time, and mm -hmm. you get to see this genuine, like, friendship with, with L, and, like, yeah. like, like, you can tell, the Death Note corrupts people. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. It does. Having that power, absolute power, corrupts that, absolutely. And without many restraints, it does that. So you can tell that the difference between Light is that he becomes completely um irreprehensible by the end of the show like he kills some people that are just don't, didn't need to die lelouch however is mm -hmm. like it's like yeah you know i am britannian and there are some good britannians like not all of them are dickheads and it shows that pretty well actually in it, 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 it does it does. humanizes especially, britannia a lot yeah i think it's yeah I, especially the second season yeah, I think the best thing about Code Gia is like the, like the two reasons why you relate more to Lelouch. One is that the the show, despite there being good Britannians and and stuff, the show makes it very clear 
that this is a fascist regime that needs to be dealt with. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, the show makes it very clear that this is not a good situation for literally everyone but the the top of the food chain. Everyone yeah, else, yeah. even in Brit- even in Britannia, Britannia, is having a shitty time, and the and the aristocracy needs to be dealt with. Um, and second, Lelouch has you know, Lelouch has something that Light doesn't, and that's not a lead. Yes. And yeah, he has it, something to ground him. He has something to ground him. Not only is that and. Y'all, and when Nolly's t- and, and, and all he wants is a is a world where his sister can live in peace. Mm-hmm. That's all he wants, and it grounds him. It makes him relatable. It makes you want to root for him. And as such, uh, Lelouch is constantly conflicted by what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Like he is always fifty fifty. He's like. I have to do this for the sake of not only and for the sake of Japan, but uh, this could have gone better. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I could have been a, I guess I could have liked, I could, I could have gone about this in a better way. Uh, yeah. And as such, all of his consequences, all of his actions have consequences, like every single one of them, and he yeah. has to deal with yeah. that. Yeah, good and bad consequences, um, and they do. All of them do. Every little one, like. One of my favorite ones is from the second episode when he first gets the Gihas and he uses it on Valletta. Yes. Just like out of – just to test it, just to test it. And Him guess what? Using the Gihas on Valletta leads to Jeremiah going insane. L- uh, fucking Valletta wondering who the hell she is, losing her memory, meeting Ogi, falling in love with Ogi, betraying Ogi. Going um, after Lelouch. Going after Lelouch, like it's it, it, like even the smallest decisions lead to like a fucking like domino effect. Yeah, it's a domino effect. Yeah. It is. It is. Lelouch's Gios, If it was okay, one, if Gios were real, two, if somebody had the Gios of absolute order, um, the world would be fucked. The world because, would be totally fucked because oh oh because it's a done. one yeah because a one word order. Can lead, can lead to fucking World War Three. Like, you don't know what's gonna happen. Yes. Yeah. That's bad. That's yes. Good. Is your internet working again? Yes, it is. Oh, thank God. Okay. okay. All right. So, but um, fucking, I heard, I heard what you said though. Don't know why. Yes. Let's move on to least favorite character, boys. Uh, yeah, let's move on to least favorite characters. I feel like this will be a lot more uh, conflicting. Uh, because there's a lot of yeah, there's a we were saying there's a lot of characters in the show. There is a lot of characters in this show. Like I think in terms of named characters, there's like fucking like forty. Yeah, there's so, a fucking it's ton a ridic- of them. It's a ridiculous amount. All right, so at, so uh, who's your so let's start with Spencer because he's gonna go first because we all know who it is. Oh, Who's yeah. your least favorite character? I was trying to think. I was, I was like, is there any other character that I can remember in uh, season one? Because it's obvious who it is in season two. That I hated as much as this character. And then I realized that this is a character that is on, that is number one or number two in my all-time least favorite anime characters. Uh, it's fucking Nina. <laughs> I hate Nina. Oh, okay, now, uh, but she really liked that table, dude. She, she really, really liked, liked that was a that nice table. table. It was a nice table. She it was so a nice table. Doing, she wasn't doing anything else. She was just admiring that the was, table. I'm admiring this fucking cedar oak table. It's mm. fucking great. <laughs> she really what's, loves that what's table. What's this? There just so happens to be a picture of Yuffie on the table. I'm not even paying attention to that. I'm paying attention to the craftsmanship of this table. table. This, is a, uh, this is an amazing wood drain cherry oak table, and just I hate her. <laughs> I hate I hate her so much. Do you think not she got like, like a? Do you think that she got like a splinter up there? Like, do you think that's like unhealthy? Oh, don't, don't, no, it. that can lead Stop to it. severe Stop infection, it. dude. Stop I, I know, but that's that's why I'm worried. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Fuck the bitch. I don't know if she raw dogged that hard. No, but... remember, remember. She was mother... going pretty hard, dude. She did. No, but remember, this motherfucker is extremely racist. 
Oh yeah, she is. Like fucking fuck the Japanese. Fuck the Jap. She hates the Japanese. You dirty eleven. <laughs> but she's in love with Euphemia, who was going to help the Jap. Imagine if but, that would have happened. No, Imagine she was fine. No, she was. It's like no, but she no, she was almost converted over when she was talking to Euphemia, and she was like, okay, maybe the Japanese aren't too bad. And, and then, then Euphemia all the dies. Japanese die. And then it's like she blames the Japanese. Like the je- like no motherfucker, you are a xenophobic piece of shit. You are the <laughs> least interesting member of the student council. I would rather listen to Rivals talk about chess. I would rather, uh, <laughs> although in honesty, I would rather hang out with Millie because I love Millie. Um, I would rather deal with Arthur the cat. Um, you suck, Nina Einstein. You are a terrible person. You are a terrible character, and you did a, and they did a really good job at, at, at making me hate you more than the actual antagonist. I despise you, die but, in a hole. But man, that's a nice table, dude. It's a nice table, a nice though. Table. All right, Shane, who's your least favorite character? Okay, I'm one? gonna get fucking shit for this. I just know it. Um, I know who it is. I know you who know it who is. it is. There's one character. That just, I could not stop thinking about how much I hated them as I was going through the show. It's fucking Mao. It's what I hate. I fucking hate him. Like, like, okay. Not only is he a fucking creep, he is, he is obsessed. He is stalker. He is, he's just a prick. And the fact that he just keeps coming back, like, there are messages. Matt can bring up the messages that I was sending him as I was watching this. I'm like, can he fucking leave, please? Like, go. And then he dies. But guess what? He's not really dead. I'm like, this fucker came back. Just fucking stay dead, you piece of shit. And then he dies again. And I'm like, please tell me he stays dead this time. And thank God that time he actually stayed dead. But, yeah. holy God, like... That, Shane hates Mal. Like, like I, I, there hasn't been a character in a long time where I literally looked at the screen and I yelled, GO AWAY! <laughs> oh, that sounds really familiar, doesn't it, Matt? <laughs> GO AWAY! Uh, fucking... Uh, <laughs> when, when, when he came back to life, did you scream that? Oh, I was like, this fucker's still alive?! Fucking go yeah. away! Yeah. You, you know what? You know, you know what's funny is he if he came back at the last like episode. No, I last... swear, I swear to God, the when he when C two shot him in the neck and he died uh-huh. the second time, I was like, please tell me he's actually dead. And you were like, yeah, he's actually dead this time. I'm like, I don't know, man. This show has been proven me otherwise. No, and then if fucking if he came back another another episode, I think I would have heard Shade scream from across the fucking country. <laughs> fucking Shade would have been Shade. I would have just heard "Go away." <laughs> okay. Fuck you, Mal. Go away. <laughs> like fucking, sure, he's, um, he's a good antagonist for that arc, but God damn it, just shut up. Just <laughs> shut up. Just go away. Um, my least favorite character of I don't uh, of the uh, uh, of season one is also Mao. Uh, okay, thank God. Because Mao is a bitch. Um, no, Mao's a dirty he, little bitch who uses underhanded he, tactics to get what he wants. And he oh, and he also doesn't shut the fuck. up. Yeah, he doesn't shut the fuck doesn't. up. He keeps monologuing. <laughs> Yep. It's like, I, I just want to go to the Lucia be like, just shoot him! Just shoot him in the face! <laughs> just, but he can be, now, the whole thing about he can read mine, so Mao is like, oh, I know you're gonna shoot me, yeah? Aw, <laughs> oh, dude, I would have loved it. Um, when they're in the tower, playing chess, and then Suzaku, like, busts through the window, I'm like, dude, drop kick him out the window! Please! Do it! <laughs> I would have been like, yes, beat his face in. <laughs> Just um, beat him to death with the chessboard. <laughs> let's talk. Uh, let any, any. Uh, let's uh, let's go into an in depth discussion. Uh, let's talk about the animation of this show. Okay. For, for a show, two thousand six. Yep. Oh my god! Like, <laughs> there's. 
this is the most consistent show I've seen in a while. Like, there is so much care and detail put into everything. Specifically the nightmares. Like, yeah. the, this level of mech animation is impressive. Especially for the time it is. They're all... It's, there's no CG involved in the mechs whatsoever. It's all... 2D hand drawn mech animation and it looks amazing. Uh, just the you no, know, just the fact, just the um, just the way they move, um, the way they uh, like the way the action scenes work are great. The explosions in this show, yep, are so good. Um, like you would think that this is a Michael Bay film. Um, there's a fucking uh, the the character animations. I love the character designs of this show. By the oh, way, oh yeah, I was gonna say like this is one of the most unique looking anime I've ever seen. It's because, Clamp, by the way, who did the character designs for this. Yeah, because so. yes. I, I don't think any other show would go this far out there with their character designs to make everyone super lanky stick men, <laughs> but it it somehow works. Yeah, it's it's studio it's clamp. So and that's the in house that's clamp's in house style. Uh, this and fucking go we watch Card Captor Sakura. They have the same style. Um, it has been a while do. since I've seen Card Captor. So yeah, they have the same style. That's also clamp. Um, oh yeah, I remember. I remember fucking Sakura's long fucking spindly legs now. Yeah. 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 Uh, fucking, um, fucking, uh, but, like, I think the one time that I noticed it the most is when Suzaku first came out in his, like, Lancelot uniform, and his legs are the size of him. Like, the, <laughs> like, uh, like, they're the leg. size, they're, they're as long as, they're as tall as, like, small trees. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is tall. Um... But it works because it has they have great designs. The key, uh, fucking uh, characters just are, have just great designs, yeah. and they just look good. I also like I also I, like how angular everything is because I feel like that style really works with the content of the show. Yeah, especially for like the especially for like the villain characters. Yeah. Um, um, and Lelouch. Um, uh, it's a, it's what a, it's just a, just a, the show looks great. Um, I love. The nightmares of mm -hmm. so much. Okay, let's let's get this out of the way. Favorite nightmare? Uh, easily. Uh, it, mine is easily fucking uh, the um, uh, the fuck the Gurren. Um, ah, the Gurren Mark Two. The Gurren. Uh, the Gurren. Uh, I love the Gurren. Um, uh, for both seasons, it's Gurren. By the way, the Gurren's great. Um, just I love its design. I love the fact that it has a fucking. A hand nuke, uh, fucking, <laughs> uh, it's it's like fucking arm is a nuke. I love it. I love how fast it flies. I love fucking. Uh, I just love the coloring. Uh, it just it's just a great mech. I just love it. Also, I also love the Gar the Gawain as well. I like that too. Mm -hmm. So Lancelot. Yeah, uh, Lancelot. Lancelot. The Lancelot's fucking rad, dude. And the Lancelot yeah. keeps getting cooler because they keep adding <laughs> shit to it. Yeah. Yeah. Lancelot yeah. is fucking Fuck, cool. Fucking, um, I like some of the other ones is that, uh, some of the other ones cool. I like Anya's mech, the Mordred. Mm -hmm. Mordred's cool. Mordred's really cool. Mordred's, um, um basically, uh, Luz, what was, every mech from what, yeah. the Night of Seven. The um, what was, uh, the Percival, Percival, then Lucino's yeah. mech, uh, Lucino's mech is really fucking cool. What was Lelouch's mech from season two? Uh, it was the. Uh, I can't remember the exact name right now. Uh, it was the. It was the Shikido. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That thing's fucking rad. Yeah, he has like a million fucking. Uh, he's got like a million computer screens, and he's like fucking just. He's like a hacker, dude. It's like fucking that scene from Swordfish. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking. Uh, he's fucking every hacker in every movie ever. Um. I mean, uh, uh, fucking, this, the, I love the, I love the design though, because they're so different from other mechs. Yeah. They're not, they're not huge mechs. They're not like huge. Like they're, they're big, but they're like truck size pretty much. Um, yes. they're like truck size and they move so fat. It's because of uh, like and, motherfucking wheels. And they move like, they move almost like fucking, um. Like like fucking rollerblades almost. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Um, they're just they're just great to look. I love I just love the mechs. I, I think they're great. Um, anything uh, the 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 score to this show soundtrack. is fantastic. The soundtrack to the show is fantastic. Um, uh, especially the insert songs mm-hmm. would have that like yeah. sad uh, would have that like sad uh, voice to them. Uh, fucking uh, the great great shit. OPs don't fare as well. OPs. Let's talk about colors. Colors, colors is right. fucking Love. incredible. Yes. Fuck it. Uh, fuck it. It sets the tone so well. Mm-hmm. Like when you hear that. When you hear that fucking uh, that drum roll in the beginning, you're just like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're just like, <laughs> just like, I love it. I love it so much. It's so good. It's one of my favorite openings of all time. Um, one one issue I have though is that Code Geass, while it has an internal consistency to the actual content of the show, the OPs fare a little different because yeah, they're the, very uh, the, 50 the, 50. They reuse a lot of animation in yeah. their OPs. Like there's the mm-hmm. second there's a second OP of season one where the song is pretty okay, but it's basically just the same opening recut, and it's yeah. like that's pretty lazy. And, and then, then there's the th- there's the third there's opening the- for the last two episodes of season one. That's just ass. <laughs> it's <laughs> it just is. ass. It's so ass. There's nothing that I feel like that's an opening that was slapped together. Like in I'm like, why did they? Why did they maker. even change it? Like I don't know. Shane. It's literally, it's literally just for those last two episodes, and it's just a slideshow of moving character stills, and the song sucks. I'm like, why does this exist? <laughs> and then they change it in season two, and I'm like, now it makes even less sense. <laughs> There's no reason. Like the last opening, yeah, I reused some animation, but the song slapped, mm-hmm. so I didn't mind. So like, like that, like, like that's be honest here. That song slapped. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, also, the the first ED slaps. Uh, the first ED really slaps. If you if you want to know who did the ED for fucking um, uh, for that first ED, it's Amy Project. Um, and they are probably one of the most distinctive Japanese groups of all time because they have like their music are defined by two things: orchestrations and the lyrics are way too fast to understand. Yep. Um, mm. uh, they do all the Rosen Maiden OPs. Okay. Uh, uh, which, by the way, all the all the Rosen Maiden OPs are absolutely excellent. They also did, I think, one of the Vampire Night OPs, um, and uh, that one was also excellent. Their stuff is great. Um, but the first OP- ED is really good. Um, so is the second one, actually, too. Um, uh, yes, but, but, uh, is it, but is it as good as OP2 of Death Note? I unironically love the first, second OP to Death Note, though. Uh, yeah. same, <laughs> like, same, but like it's just that's the only thing that people remember. It's just. <laughs> Death <laughs> like I okay, I love Duh. I love OPs that use death metal. I have a soft spot in my heart for those. So. I, I, I you just like death metal though. Well, yeah, I like yeah. metal. So, <laughs> just, just like that random first OP to Zombieland that they used in the first episode. Oh yeah, the, like thrash metal and shit is fucking. Da, 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 the first Dude, o, right. the first ED for Hunter Hunter, the one that Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas did. That oh, caught yeah. me way that, off that guard. doesn't fit Shonen at all. That caught me so off guard. <laughs> uh, fucking, um, but yeah, anything else we want to talk about? Because there's a lot we could talk about with the first season. There honestly is uh, a lot, but I feel like oh. we'd be repeating ourselves. I know what I want to talk about. What do you want to talk table? about? Fuck that ending. Oh, oh let's get into ending. criticisms then. Uh, that end, there's, a, there's an infamous, Code Geass is infamous for having a cliffhanger ending. Um, and it's, uh, Here's, in its seconds. here's the thing. I wouldn't call it a criticism, because I don't really have a problem with it. Sure, I oh, yeah. was mad, but it's, it's so it's a- brilliantly executed. Lelos! Suzaka! Yeah, and then two gunshots go off. And then two gunshots, like- and then Nonali, and then, hey, see you in, a, like, a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll get into season two's production in a bit, because it's, oh boy, it's a mess. Uh, but, um... We'll get uh so like, but uh, that ending I, is brilliant. It's it's oh, a yeah, brilliant yeah, it's, ending, yeah. okay. but it's, it pisses two, me off. 
these two love it. I cannot stand it. I uh, just it's uh... okay. There's <laughs> the only good part of that. Those last two episodes is the famous. I will now pleasure myself with this fish. That's not even from the last two episodes. That's like episode eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when the fuck are they on the island? Episode That's eighteen. Like... <laughs> oh. Still, fine then. Season one has I will pleasure myself with this fish, and season two has Why are you shopping at soup at the soup store? Why are you buying <laughs> from clothes? A, at the that's from an abridged series. Yes, but it's still like like the 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 image that they take is from the second season. Oh, Why yeah, are true, you yeah. buying clothes at the soup store? Fuck, Fuck you! you! Fucking Code Mint is still the funniest of bridge series ever mm-hmm. made. Do not at me. It is mm-hmm. a really, it's a brilliant piece of surrealist comedy. And if you have not watched it, please fucking watch it. Uh, but um, but I just, I get angry at, at that type of anything now. So it's like it's not a criticism fully towards Kogios. It's just I hate when people do that. Yeah. Like it. Oh, they're on the they're on they're on the island episode nineteen. By the way. Okay. All right, so like, but like uh, that ending. That ending is aggravating, but it's also brilliant because it's like it it it, it builds to such a reason. Like, I love the scene where Suzaku confronts Zero and fucking just shoots him. Yes, breaks his mask, and you just see it fall to the ground. No music, no sound, and you just see Lelouch there. And fuck it, he's, Lelouch is just there. His hair comes out. He starts bleeding from his forehead because it, you know, gun. <laughs> um, because boy. and and then he just smiles and just says, "Well, hell, like what does he say? Uh, fucking, uh, he says something. Uh, uh, he says something. Uh, fucking, uh, 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 fucking. He basically just smiles and basically taunts Suzaku, and it's great. Yeah, I love, I love, and I ha, I love hate that ending. Yeah." I love it for uh, it's, its direction and how brilliantly it's executed, but I hate it because fuck you, fuck you. Because <laughs> fuck, sh- fuck this show. Even um, even in 2019, knowing full well that I was going right into season two, still fuck you. I was mad. Yeah. Uh, so fucking. Uh, I think what I, I think we've pretty much said we all we can about season one. I mean, uh, final scores. For, what? Uh, the, the last thing I want to mention is an actual criticism I have with the show. Why are there so many goddamn characters? <laughs> like, There's a ton. Holy fuck! There's so many characters that I feel like it's kind of, it it's kind of a detriment to the show because half of them just don't really do anything. And I've had issues with shows like this in the past where they have so many characters and don't know what to do with them. Like sure, they a lot of them turn around and a lot of them do get a purpose later on, but it's a it's an issue I have with both seasons. I feel like they kind of overloaded it with characters at certain points. But again, it's not it's not Ooh, enough to really sour the experience. Like it doesn't bring the show down. It's just I, why are there so many of them? I think what saves it is the fact that each character is so distinctly likable. Like the they're all distinct. They're all like you recognize. Like even if you don't know their names, you're like, oh, it's that person because yeah. they look so distinct. Like. Uh, it, you're, you're, and then you're like, you know what the, and then you're like, and then you remember, oh, it's this person, they do this, and then what are they gonna do now? So, like, you know exactly what they do. So, I think that's why it works, is that there's no, like, kind of kid that's like, who are you again? No, you always recognize them because of how they look. Because yeah. they have distinct character designs, and the character designs in this are great. Uh, Even final if they scores, don't really do anything, but that's fine. Yeah, right. Final scores for season one, Spencer. Spencer's probably the only one who doesn't have a 10. Spencer? Did Spencer die? I think Spencer... I think Spencer is... Did Spencer walk away? (laughs) Spencer? You little bitch! (laughs) What? It's it's fucking Spencer. You little bitch, why'd you walk away? (laughs) I'm Adam. uh, (laughs) Alright, let's uh, go into our scores while we wait for him to come Yeah, let's go. Uh... 10 out of 10. 10 out of fucking 10? <laughs> like. Because. Because holy shit. Like, this is one of the easiest 10s I've given on the show. Like, this this is a fucking trip. I fucking love it. I love everything about it. And sure, there's a couple too many characters. But it doesn't. It, it doesn't 
take away from the fact that this show is brilliantly paced, brilliantly executed, brilliantly directed, acted, written, produced, animated. Everything about it is phenomenal. And like I said at the beginning of the at the beginning of the discussion, I actually might be considering uh, working around my top 10 list to put this in there somewhere because I think it deserves it. This is my favorite show that I've watched in a long time. So Yeah, it's it's absolutely fantastic. Um fuck it. Uh, uh we'll get we'll do Spencer's final score when he inevitably gets back. Yeah, wherever the fuck dead. he went, you piece of shit. Yeah, he's fucking dead. Um and we'll move on to season two, which is called which is called R R2. Um which I Oh, he's back. Bring? Hello. Where the Hello. fuck did you go? I told you I was taking a piss. I didn't hear that, you cuck. Well, maybe you should listen to me. Well, I'm sorry. I got too much shit in my ear holes. Oh, no, fuck it. Uh, fuck it. Final fine. score time. What's the final score for season one? Nine out of ten. There you go. Not a Nine out of ten. There you go. It, it was originally a seven, so... <laughs> it went up two points. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's move on to season two of also known as R two, also known as R two, which is I believe is what it means round two, uh, I believe. Um, go sure. continue with the chess motifs. Um, yes. Ow. Um, uh, Lelouch, uh R two takes place around a year after the events of season of season one. Lelouch has lost his memories due to, we find out that his father, Charles Z. Britannia, the, uh, mm -hmm. the Emperor of Britannia, also has a Gios. The ability to wipe people's memories, his, Lelouch's memories, has been completely, uh, uh, and and also the Black Rebellion, um, the, the Black Rebellion, which is the, was, was a coup at the end of season one, was a failure, uh, and it resulted in Lelouch's kidnap and capture and brainwashing. Um, he eventually uh, overcomes this. He eventually overcomes this and regains his memories and begins to reform the Black Knights in a desperate attempt to uh, in a desperate attempt to rescue his sister Nonalee from the clutches of his father Charles E. Britannia. Also, while continue also while dealing with the fact that Suzaku, who now knows his true identity, basically hates him now and wants to basically and, and has been is now fully committed to continuing Britannia's rule over the world. So. Uh, season two is <laughs> season two is something. Uh, Shane, what do you think of season two of Code of this of Code Geass? Uh, is that your reaction to it? Like, okay. If you thought season one was crazy, you haven't <laughs> seen anything yet. Oh it's, boy! <laughs> this movie, this show's nuts. Yeah, this show, like. Take the the take the crazy factor from season one, bump it up to eleven, and just go with it through the whole season, just the whole fucking thing. And it's like, <laughs> like I said, with season one, there's barely a moment to catch your breath. Double that in season two. Like you aren't even breathing for half of this show. Like yeah, it's, it's crazy. Just like, it's insane. It's not Spencer. What do you think of season two? I, uh... <sighs> <laughs> there it is. There. That's that's there a is. that's a sound bite for the sound bite. Yeah. It. This is it. This. This. Uh... This show fucking rock. Season two. Infinitely better than season one because of a dip because of a couple characters being reintroduced better than ever. Like this, oh, this is hey, such a good. Do you like more A list voice actors doing really really good performances? Or are you yes. gonna like season two? You're gonna like season two. Do you like? Improved animation. Well, you'll like season two. Yeah. Would you like storytelling that is so concise and fucking, uh, fucking, uh, well, economically paced? Well, you're gonna like season two. Do you like company involvement from Kodansha? Well, you might not, like season. might not like Sunrise. Do you Sunrise. do you like a hot green haired lady getting trapped in a truck full of tomatoes? Well, by golly, you found the show for you. Do Find you like? Do you like 
the great episode where somebody pulls out a hammer and tries to kill somebody for a hat? Because <laughs> you're going to like season two. Well, well, ladies, go get his hat, and then you will be his wife forever. Yeah. <laughs> and I th- I'm pretty sure a couple of dudes tried to get his hat, too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Lelouch is just like, why does everyone love me? Ah. I don't know, maybe because you're an expert. That episode character. was for tar- That episode was so stupid. So stupid. <laughs> like, like the, fact that, was- the fact that Rolo uses his Gios to pull him into the closet to get away yes. from the horde of women. Like The fact that Rolo put himself in danger because of his Gios to save his "Quote unquote older brother from being attacked by women is it is fucking hilarious. Season two and then best. that episode has the has like a wallop of an ending. Holy it shit! Does. Um, but um, let's uh, let's talk about uh, let's uh, talk about uh, favorite episode because this is going to be an interesting one because I'm pretty sure we all have the same one. It, but, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, Spencer, what's your favorite episode? Uh, let me get the alpha name of it up real quick. Do do do. Uh, uh, episode was it fourteen? Love attack. A love attack is episode twelve. Twelve. Okay. Let me just real quick then. Um, that love attack is my favorite episode for <laughs> a myriad of reasons. Um, real quick, real quick. Everyone wears hats. Everybody Everyone has that. a hat. Billy Ashford decides to go insane for an episode. Yeah. Uh, She's yeah. like, hey, I'm, I'm the graduating. leader of the student council. Maybe I should start using this power of mine. Everyone and go and after just, Lelouch's it's, it's, dick. I'm, I'm like, I'm I am a, I am graduation. It's called Cupid Day. Any girl can become a girl's boyfriend and steal his hat and vice versa. Which one is arguably sexual assault. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Fuck yeah. it is. And, and also, it. like, there's no consent at all. Like, I, and, if you just have their hat, then, you're now boyfriend girlfriend. You can't talk me out of it. And then the great Millie Ashford places a bounty on Lelouch's head, <laughs> causing most of the school to go after him. Which also brings Rolo and Sayako together to help Lelouch avoid students. Oh, I forgot about the Sayako. The stuff. ninja. The ninja. The ninja. ninja. The ninja comes in, she's like, I got you. But, it, but Shirley ends up in, like, it's it like a fucking weird, like, back building or some shit like it's that. It's a mall. She's in it, it, a mall. She's a, yeah, a, yes, yes, never mind. Cause it's the ending. She's in a mall, and then her and um, Lelouch talk, and then they trade hats, and it's like, aw, that's nice. And then the greatest character in the entire show shows up and tests his Gios out, and then suddenly Shirley has all of her memories back. And it's like, oh! That's the end of the episode. Cancel Gios! It's a Gios canceler! Um... Uh, but yeah, uh, I love that episode because it's like, is that sexual assault? Yeah, probably. Yeah. It's also fucking hilarious for some reason. And yeah, I don't why know is why. the cat here? <laughs> The cat. That episode is fucking funny. Like it's so fucking funny. The like guy, the fact that the entire school is thirsty for Lelouch. Like, like literally everybody, regardless of gender or even like fucking, fucking who, like fucking, uh, fucking, and I all and all Shirley wants is just I want to I want to be uh, uh Lelouch's like I want to be Lelouch's girlfriend and Lelouch is like, eh, that sounds uh-huh. like. Good. <laughs> Also, Lelouch, Lelouch. This is the episode we. Lelouch is awful with women, by the way. Oh, yes. like, yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. Compl- this but, is we're so. This, this is the epitome of like your best friend who says he can talk to women, and then he tries it and he fails. And he just women. kind of Lelouch. mumbles at her for a couple yeah. minutes. <laughs> uh, fucking Lelouch is like the type of guy who's like, I can get any woman I want. Walks up to a woman. Uh, you like I love chess? You. <laughs> You like chess? Uh, hi, uh. <laughs> uh, he can only talk to women if he's zero because he can't see their fucking face because of that damn mask. So are you attractive? Are you ugly? I don't know, but I'll take it. I don't know, but uh, 
Good job. I go by the cool mint mentality that he that when he puts on the mask, he's completely blind and can't see shit. (laughs) How does he walk? (laughs) And he only has one window for his geos, and that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Fuck it. But yeah, Love Attack is Spencer's favorite episode. Shane, what's your favorite episode? Well, we have the same one. It's the finale. My favorite, yeah, episode 25, repeat. Um, this episode's fucking brilliant. <laughs> this is a brilliant finale. Uh, this is, the, reportedly, this was the first episode of Code Geass that they wrote. So they uh, had, the, wow, so they had the ending from the beginning. Yeah, like, they, had the Im- yeah they had the image of Lelouch getting killed by his own uh, fucking his own uh, moniker. Ulti- his own moniker from the very beginning. And it and like, shows, because this is the most well-put-together finale. Yeah, it like, it makes perfect sense. Like, I love how Code Geass recontextualizes things, because once you realize what's happening, it all makes sense. Everything Lelouch has done up to this point makes perfect sense. He sacrifices believe- himself for his country and his sister and everyone. Because like, he believes, because as he's, he, you see him, because it, it, it's the variety of emotions. When you first see him as emperor, you're like, oh, okay. Like What's that, he ca- do now? that caught me off guard. It's like, okay, you got rid of Charles. He's just gone now. So now you're the emperor. Okay. Well, wait. Suzaku is your knight. Well, hold the fuck up there. Don't you two hate each other? And then yeah, once and you then- realize that they made the zero requiem, and Suzaku knew that. Lelouch was basically give throwing his life away. He's like, okay, I can do this one last thing for you. Yeah, and then fucking uh, yeah, and like when you see him as emperor, you see him. He's like, oh, he abolishes the aristocracy. The area system's gone. He wants to in- insert a democracy, and it's like, oh, and maybe Lelouch is gonna try. Maybe maybe his plan is that he's gonna reform it from like the highest end of power, basically change Britannia's image and compl- and fix Japan. But then it's like, oh, he's doing all of this, uh, this uh, shady shit, and you're like, oh, wait a yeah, minute. Yeah, he's basically being a tyrant like his father was. Did, 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 mm-hmm. it, 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 did he get corrupted by power? Is he getting power hungry? Because the show, at this point, had actually been kind of building to him going kind of nuts yes. uh, with power due to the fact that he was getting more powerful. Uh, and then, no, and then, um, no, and then... After beating, uh, and then Suzaku dies, and I use that yeah. in air quotes. Air quotes. We, we think, yeah, we think he Big dies, and everyone else thinks he dies. So we're like, okay, so Lelou- Suzaku's fucking dead. So Le- uh, Lelouch is on his own now. What's he going to Lelouch do? Is, yeah, uh, basically become a tyrant. Literally become a tyrant. Yeah. Uh, Tyrannical like, rule. A, even worse than Charles at this point. Um, yes. And kill his own fucking people. His own and then, former group. And then what? Zero's here. What? What? And dodges bullets. Yeah, he dodges a fucking bullet. He dodges bullets, and it's dope. And you can tell it's not uh, Lelouch. Because if you remember, from the early season one, Lelouch can't run. Yep. He, no, he's not Lelouch a... is like the laziest unfit bitch on the planet. <laughs> and he knows it. Like, um, it's, it's he, very clear as soon as the Zero imposter shows up who it is. Because there's only one character who moves like that. And exactly. it's Suzaku. Um, and it's Suzaku. And then he goes up, takes a sword, and just impales him straight to the chest. Kills and kills Lelouch. And one of my favorite things about it is that you can tell which characters figure out what Lelouch's plan was just by their reactions when he gets stabbed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Nunnally is the prime example. No, Nunnally yeah. figures it out. Colin quickly realizes what the hell's going on, um, and it, Colin's like, "Oh fuck, uh, I'm uh, fucking. Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure a lot, a couple of the Black Knights know what's going on." Yeah. Yep. Like, uh, and, like this. This finale puts all of Lelouch's actions into context. Like, <laughs> and I, I lost my fucking shit. Like mm-hmm. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa! He be- he turned himself into a martyr, and you were like, yep. And I was like, ah! yep. <laughs> you crafty bastard, Lelouch, the craftiest bastard, <laughs> to the <laughs> very end. 
he crafted his own death. He, the the world, he was like, the world is good to unite in the hatred of me. I'm and going to make everyone despise my fucking soul that when I do die, everyone will come together and unite over the hatred of my fucking bitch ass. And then <laughs> it's just, it, everyone will finally be free and they'll form their own nation. Yeah, and Nonali is now the Empress of Britannia, and since Nonali is a pacifist... There's no war. Yeah. There's going to be no war. Um, and Suzaku and, is forever damned to be zero. Because everyone thinks he's dead. Um, but that was Suzaku. Suzaku and, and was like, are you sure you want this? Well, Yuffie's dead. I have no reason to live anymore, so might as well. Uh, th this fucking finale is amazing. Like, yeah. I love it. It might be my favorite final episode of any show, to be honest. And oh, well, but JK... Because the movies tell you I was no. just going to say, the movies potentially fuck it up. <laughs> uh, pot potentially uh, fuck it up. Thankfully, it seems like that the movies are in a separate alternate timeline. Um, if you if you watch the Keto, which I know you guys didn't, is canon in the in the Geass universe. So, hmm? Mm. Um, so, hmm? Uh, but uh, we'll get it. We'll get into that eventually. Um. Favorite characters from season two. Mm. This is a, it's Lelouch again. This is a much more tough. This is a tougher very, one. Very, actually. very obvious. So I'm going to say. So I'm going to go first. Yeah, Spencer, you go first. It is Jeremiah Gottweld, the orange boy himself, <laughs> who serves Lelouch at his every command. Which makes yes. perfect sense in hindsight. Yes, it's great. He shows up. He uses, he tests out in his Geos, and you're just like, oh, this guy's, he's back, he's kind of like a robot man now. And he's like a fucking cyborg, like, Cyborg, cool? and he's, he's cool, but he's, he's still kind of, kind of, kind of, still kind of like a villain, and then he's like, lol, I, I'm a double agent, I'm actually here to help you out, I got you, buddy. And then, and then, he, he marries one of the knights, and guess what? He becomes an orange farmer becomes an orange <laughs> he becomes he owns an orchard and he grows oranges with anya and i'm just like good job orange boy also i love voice by crispin freeman so yeah you know. crispin I, freeman. Love, I, I love his voice dude i love it it's such a good uh, well because it's like uh, it's it's this over the top kind of like noble sounding like cocky bastard Orange is the name of my loyalty. Monty. Memorize I will be, this. I will be with you forever, Lynch. <laughs> I will be. No, yeah, Jeremiah yeah. Gottwelt. I, I served late, and then now I will serve you. I love, I, I, I love Jeremiah <laughs> so much. Really, really good. And I could name a couple other ones, you know, like Gino. I love Gino. Um, but I also really, really like Lloyd. Fucking because we Lloyd. haven't talked about Lloyd yet. Lloyd is great. I love Lloyd. Lloyd's great, and I love his voice. Yes. Fucking uh, fucking um, one hundred percent. It's the motherfucking orange boy himself who just makes a really shitty like diss. To, towards Suzaku that involves the color orange, and that's just that becomes his his, his character. Now. <laughs> My yeah, character it, it, is orange. Mm -hmm. I love I I love fucking. You, did you know that in the initial draft he was supposed to die at the Battle of Naruto in like halfway through season one? But fans loved him so much that they fucking just kept him around as a cyborg. That doesn't. <laughs> now he's a fucking and... cyborg boy. <laughs> And he can cancel other kiosks. And also, by the way, I, I, I really like Rolo. Um, because yeah. Spike Spencer. Uh, yeah, Rolo's great. Um, all right, Spain, who's your favorite character? I'm t I am have a tie. Because I want to go Lelouch Dude, again. Because everything that made Lelouch great in Season 1 is just amplified in Season 2. And again, that ending really makes you think about his character from a different perspective and how everything has been leading up to this point. Like, Lelouch is great, but um, my other favorite character in the season is easily Suzaku. 
Because we haven't really ah, yeah, talked Suzaku. much about Suzaku. Yes, true. And how great of a character he yeah. is. Suzaku's is. arc in season two is phenomenal. Like, it's he's so just fun. a he's just a broken man who has nothing to live for. And you can very clearly see that because he becomes really cold, really distant, really angry a lot of the time. But then when and he, you know what the worst thing about it is? Is that he wants, he has nothing to live for, and yet he's got a Gios... That prevents him from dying. Mm-hmm. He's fucking tragic as shit. Yes. Oh fuck! I forgot. Yeah. That he can. He's commanded to live. He can live. Yeah. commanded him to live like an idiot. <laughs> so every time he's in danger or he goes to do something that could get him killed, the Gios activates yeah. and he becomes God. He he is forced <laughs> to find a way to live, even though he yeah. has nothing to live for and just wants to die. Yeah, and that's, the, and that's why he's condemned to live. That's why he lived through the explosion. Because he knew yeah. that even though he dies, he will find a way to live a way that he can get out of it. Mm-hmm. He, he's stuck. And then the pact that he makes with Lelouch near the end, and they form the Zero Requiem, it's like, after everything you two have been through, after you found out that your best friend is a terrorist... And who killed the woman that you love. And he's done all these terrible things. You still have enough love in your heart. To forgive him just this once. And see it through to the end. And the fact and that. Fun- the fact that it's Suzaku. Who kills Lelouch at the end. Is so much more impactful. Than I feel any mm-hmm. other character. Yeah it, it's so impactful when he killed. And fucking Suzaku's like crying his yes, eyes out. Like, when- regardless of how he feels about Lelouch. He was his best friend at one point. So, hell, you could argue that even through the hatred, there is some form no, of friendship. There, and there, there is a part of Suzaku that still loves Lelouch, regardless of what he's done. There's still a mm-hmm. piece of him that considers him a friend. And the fact yeah. that he kills him at the end, and he's sad about it, and he's in distress, he's crying. Like, he still loves Lelouch, but it's just, it's, it's too much. It's too much weighing down on him. I, I fucking I love Suzaku in this season. I love what they did with him. So hey, I, I'm tied hey, between the two bo- the two main yeah, boys. Yeah, I'm going Lelouch uh, because Lelouch is my fit is one of, is one of my all time favorite anime characters, and I just can't in good conscience say Suzaku's up there though. Uh, there's a lot of great characters in season two. It's even fucking even go to the villain side. Schneisel is one of my favorite yep. fucking villains. I uh, he's so fucking fascinating as a villain and as an antithesis he's basically lelouch if lelouch embraced the britannian ideologies and yes. it's horrifying imagine lelouch was a fucking britannian that's like a like a britannian like noble and that's schnitzel um and that's pretty great let's talk about least favorite character though spencer's is still nina i know that for sure she threatens to nuke the fucking school because her dead girlfriend <laughs> i i Ah, uh, every time she shows up on the screen, I pause it and I go, leave this fucking anime, die in a hole, you bitch. I hate you with every fiber of my being. She fucking threatens to nuke the place. <laughs> but man, that's, she, a, that's a nice table, takes, isn't it? She takes over the Lancelot. Well, yes, yes, take a Lancelot with the fucking nuke arm and goes, hey, I have the explosive thing. How dare you, Elevens, ki- uh, kill Euphemia? Wah, wah, I'm a baby girl. Suck my fucking dick, you motherfucking cunt! Oh my god. I hate her. <laughs> but I man, hate really? Her. Had no idea. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have guessed. Uh, Shane, Boy, what's your least favorite can character? I borrow your, uh, can I borrow your credit card to buy some Pizza Hut real quick? <laughs> Yeah, here I'll send. I'll send you the three uh, the three wacky numbers on the wacky back. wacky numbers in the back. Thanks. Uh, but that's a nice table, though. Anyway, it's a nice table. <laughs> Who's the least favorite character, Shane? Okay. You 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 know who it is, and, and you're gonna hate mad. me. I hate you. I already hate you. I know who it is. Plot twist: It's not Schneisel. <laughs> Thank fuck. Because I was about you know to what? fucking yeah. I like. I love Schneisel as a villain, but I hate him as a person. Because I had no problems with Schneisel up until the point where he shot Cornelia. And I was like, alright, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. 
but oh, I realized yeah. even going back to season one, there was a character that I could I could not stand even more, who carried over and just proved that there were no redeeming qualities to him. It's motherfucking Charles. Yes, Charles. It's Charles Z. Britannia. That's because, my choice too. Oh my! Because God. this daft cunt has the yeah. audacity to pull this kind of shit. Like Mary Ann's up there too as least favorite character. What a fucking you spent. I I, I want to put Mary Ann as my least favorite possibly because all right, like you've you, gone this entire show thinking that that what what he did to fucking. To fucking Mary, he was like, "Oh, Charles killed Marianne," or like a fucking, like a fucking. Uh, what happened to her was tragic. But then you find out what actually nope. happened. She's been hiding in Anya She's been in on it. the whole She's time. In She's been in on it the entire time because her gear, because she also had a gear, and her gear was that she could transfer her fucking consciousness from person to person, and it's a uh, fucking. And then oh, and turns out that not only all of not only shit. Is actually faked. Yep, all of, all of her shit is faked because of Charles Gios. Yeah, because it fucking so turns out that Charles and Marianne were in it on the whole time and ruined their own children's lives just so they can get power. And, yep, and and it's ugh, ugh, and guess them. what? They fucking deserve what they got. They did basically. Be gone! Yeah, basically Lelouch. <laughs> shoots the middle finger at God and is like, hey, fuck you. And then they die. <laughs> and my favorite line, is, no, my one of my favorite scenes is when you see both of the Gioses in both of his eyes for the first time. I'm be gone! And then they, and he tell, and they, they basically like just vapor. Yeah. Rise. Uh, like that's great. That episode was in contention for my favorite for a while, uh, up until the ending, of course. But that episode yeah, the Ragnarok phenomenal. Can, um, yeah, and the way it explores the Gios too. The yeah, the way it explores like the history of the Gios. We haven't even touched C two yet in these fucking two things. I know C two is why a I great to girl. Or when your credit card gets some Pizza Hut. Yeah, C two. I mentioned how much I like Pizza Hut, by the way. C two is a great girl, and I love her. Yeah, fucking when she loses her memory, she becomes the cutest girl of all time. I know. I love oh, it's criminal. <laughs> I, it's like it, it's, it's Lelouch. It's like Lelouch is. I'm, I'm just like to lose. I'm like, give her some food. You fucking give her food and hugs. Just love her. <laughs> Please. Uh, uh, Colin. Colin. Yeah, I, I know. Colin. Colin fuck, Colin is my best girl. I'm sorry, I can't get over her. Like top tier waifu. Uh, Shane. Shane saw her tits. Mm. <laughs> you see, you, there's a lot of tits. So, in this why show, are there so many the tits? <laughs> That's because the show aired, the original season aired in a late night slot because Sunrise had no faith in the original season. So, they put in a late night slot and to co to compensate, they put a lot of blood, a lot of tough stuff. Yep. That's why Nina what masturbates. A... That's why they got the, uh, that, that's why you got the fucking uh, the tits, you got the blood. Got the, a lot yeah, of, viol right. of violence and sex galore. Yeah, you got all that shit because it was in a late night slot. Um, but it goes over to season two as well. Okay. Um, um, before we carry on, uh, yes. everyone needs to pick a waifu and husbando because this show is full of them. This oh, okay waifu, for, no waifu. C two, Colin and husbando's and husbando's Lelouch. Okay, my husbando's Lelouch, easy runner up Suzaku. Uh, waifu easily Colin. Spencer. Spencer. Husbando, husbando is Jeremiah, um, and waifu is Millie. There you Millie's go. a good choice. Also for husbando, I almost went with Gino. Yes, Gino, the boy. Gino. I mean, C two and Shirley are very close runner ups for my waifu. C C two. C two. Uh, I went with C two because I love C two. I also sorry. like I, I love C2. branded pizza. Yum! Yeah, hey, I, hey! Do you want some Pizza Hut branded pizza right now? I would I, love some pizza. I would I love would, a stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut right as, now. C two could have easily just been a plot device because of her role in the story, but she's not. She's an active she's participant active. in the Black Knights. Yep. She when Lil instantly takes over the 
Black Knight operations without um, and becomes an actual member of the Black Knights, even if everyone thinks that <laughs> fucking C2 is his mistress. Yeah. Yep. Also, um, although by the end, you, I'd argue that it's very vague on <laughs> what the relationship is by the end. But Also, C2's outfit in season two, the black one, Fucking oh hell. yeah, his Black Knight's outfit is a uh, fucking hot, and I love it. Everyone is just really hot in this show. Like yeah. I don't know why, but it, it's just a bunch of attractive people, and it's great. Um, but yeah. So, uh, anything else we want to talk about? Honestly, we'd just be repeating. Yeah, ourselves. we'd just be repeating ourselves yeah. for season one. Everything that was good about season one is just amplified here. Uh, yeah. Again, the only issue I have is that there's a little, there's a few too many characters. Like half of the fucking the the knights Knight. do nothing. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, they show up for like two episodes and then die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, I, but yeah, I really like. Lo- but yeah, uh, let's go. I think we can go jump right to final scores then. Mm-hmm. Um, so final scores. Okay. Everyone say it on three. So one, two, three, score. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Three, two, one, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. There we you went go. Backwards. You fucking confused me. You went okay. Remember, guys, one, two, three, score, and then you went three, two, one, and I went. What? Are you tricking me? <laughs> well, you said ten out of ten, so who cares? I did yeah. because I, I, I was like, oh, they're gonna say ten. I'm just gonna say it on whatever. Yeah, ten out of ten. I fucking. L- this is a 10 out of 10. Easy. Mm-hmm. Easy, oh, easy, 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 10 out of 10. Originally an 8 out of 10, by me. <laughs> we didn't, even, we didn't a... even talk about any of the production issues. Yeah, because there was, but because this was a production hell. Um, Apparently, Sunrise... uh, what, what Matt told me, half of the season is just shit that Sunrise threw in. Yeah, it pretty much is. What happened was that Sunrise saw the unexpected you know, popularity of the original season, which blew up, um, was blew up. And then they're like, you know what? We can make a franchise out of this. And they're like, okay, we want more nightmare designs so we can sell more like Gumpla, more Mecha, more Mecha figures. We want, um, we wanted to move it to an earlier time, like a prime time time slot. So basically the best time for like anime like this. So, so, which means that the C series has to like reset itself kind of. So new viewers can like be not confused uh, uh, we want you to add a, uh, a, a chibi boy. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, with Rolo, because we need to get the Fujoshi demographic back in. Uh, even yes. though the Fujoshi demographic was already in there because the Lucian Suzaku are basically gay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, um, like, here, hang on. To, let me switch. We want you to add, 34. we want you to add, uh, oh, we want you to make the mecha more mecha. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we want you to add a bunch of new characters so you can sell toys. Okay. Um, we want you to, oh, and, uh, we want, um, and we want every, oh, and they also said this, we want every episode to have a plot twist. They want makes, makes want sense. Every episode to have a plot twist. So every episode of Code Geass season, uh, so pretty much the season, this season could have been a mess, but it wasn't, and it was actually really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Just it's great, straight stuff. Uh, so is that production issues does not necessarily mean a bad product. Nope. With that, it, it turned yeah, out. I think with that, really fucking well. Yeah, I think with that, it's time we move on to the anime gener random anime generator, the randomizer. Now, if you guys don't know how this worked, every vo- every podcast we rotate between one of our picks and the randomizer. Last time, it, we, I was the one who picked Code Kios, which means that it's time we move on to the randomizer. So. Uh, before the, before we get started, uh, does anyone wish to use a meta? Matthew, I wish to use my meta. Okay, Spencer wishes to use his meta. If you guys don't know Let's how metas guys. work, because because of the ran- because of the randomizer is easy enough to uh, meta and cheese. We are now we are going to pretty much uh, no. Uh, we have given option each member person on the podcast is given one meta to use throughout the year in order to pick any show that they want. Uh, uh, Josh has used his meta, so we've already used. This is the second meta being used, and it'll be from Spencer. Okay, so what do you want to? Okay, so what do you want to plug in for episodes? One to twenty-five plus. So one twenty-five plus. Okay. 
125 plus. What scores do you want to plug in? Between a 7 and a 7.5. Between a 7 and a 7.5. When was it released? Between 2000 when? And 2005 to 2005. Wait, wait, what? You cut out me. 2005 to 2005. 2005 to 2005 to 2005. One year, all right? Included genres. Matthew? Yeah? The only TV rating I want is TV 14. Only TV 14, okay. What genres, genres do you want to include? Action, adventure, drama, mecha, sci-fi, shonen. All right, I'm going to repeat that for you. Action, adventure, drama, mecha, sci-fi, shonen. And then yes. exclude? Everything else. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes, yeah. All right, I'm going to repeat it one more time so you can confirm it. Yes. It's rated TV 14. Yes. Between a 1 to 25 plus episodes, scores yes. between 7 and 7.5, released between 2005 and 2005. It is yes. an action adventure drama mecha sci fi shonen and excluding yes. every other genre. Yes. All right. Let's go. I am clicking the randomizer. And the randomizer has given us the action adventure drama mecha sci fi shonen show from 2005 called. Gun cross sword. Yes. All right, he did it. He did it this time. Holy Special shit! I fucking had no. I I had the page up on my phone, and I'm like, I'm just gonna read exactly what it says. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember uh, the, the, can, Because remember, okay. the first meta we ever did was Spencer's, and he fucked it up horribly. So I misplayed because I missed it. At fucking, I, I forgot that the Saint Angel existed. Yeah, so this is Spencer's redemption with the randomizer. Hey. Uh, Vaughn, a, a lanky and apathetic swordsman, is on a journey to kill the murderer of his fiance. The only characteristic he has to go by is that the murderer has a claw for an arm, hence the murderer being referred to as the Claw Man. During his travels, Vaughn happens to pass through the city of Evergreen, which is defending itself from bandits who aim the rob the city of its treasury. It is in the city that Vaughn meets Wendy Garrett, a timid young girl who is looking for her kidnapped brother. When the city pleads for Vaughn's assistance to defend it, he refuses, claiming it has nothing to do with him, and thus leaves the city to deal with the peril. Soon after, Vaughn comes across the Vading Bandits himself, and the rest of tick off the swordsman to a degree where he takes action against them for his own personal vendetta. Surprisingly, Vaughn learns that the Bandits have clashed with the Claw Man and in kidnapping Wendy's brother for a reason they did not disclose. After the Bandits are dealt with easily, Vaughn and much to chagrin Wendy continue his journey in search of the Claw Man. Little do they know that the Claw Man is involved with something far more atrocious and terrifying that either of them could fathom. This is a western. Let's go. This it sounds fucking lit. <laughs> yes, it does, right? Like that sounds fucking rad. Let's go. Yeah. Now, Matthew, who directed it? Yeah. Uh, Goro Taniguchi, the guy who directed uh Code Geass, is the who good wrote it. Uh, Ichiru Okuchi. It's the same team. It's, it's the, the same, same team. team. Are you excited, Shane? I mean, if it's basically just going to be Gios, but in the West, sign me the fuck up. It, yeah, it, it's dude. It's it's like a it's, it's like a mixture of like Gios and like Trigun and like that fucking. It's a Western, okay? Desert a, punk. Desert punk. Yeah, it's a space Western, my friend. Yeah, and it's set on and it, it, it's set in space. Yes. All right, I'm looking forward to this. This sounds fucking radical. Yeah. All right, ready then. Let's uh, and I think we're time to wrap up here. I think it's good. We're going to wrap up here. My name is Matt, aka Legion Rex. I'm your host. You can find me on Twitter and on YouTube at uh at Legion Rex. Uh, with me, I also have my co-host Shane, aka the Bearded One. You can find him on uh, Twitter and on YouTube at the Bearded Gaming Network, where he posts less plays, he posts uh, podcasts, he posts streams, he posts whenever you can upload with us. We also have our other co-host, Spencer. You can find him on Twitter at Beery Burton with two E's. Two E's. Two E's. Two e's. Um, uh, and I think we're pretty much done here, so say bye, everybody. No one no one even noticed that while you were 
you were doing the outro for me, I played the You're a Fraud Spider-Man You're a again. Fraud Spider-Man! You're a Fraud you're Spider-Man! Fraud Spider-Man. <laughs> See you later, frogs. Bye. See you later. Thank you for listening to The Gap. If you like what you've seen, you can subscribe to the Gap Podcast YouTube channel to get the latest podcasts as they go live. Be sure to like and comment and let us know what you guys think of the show. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Don't get that